calm before the storm as we stroll down a lopes way rain is in the forecast for the valley tonight and soon students will storm the gcu campus after their post-holiday celebration but here inside gcu arena tonight the heat is on as the red hot red hawks pay a visit to the lopes in this whack showdown. I'm Kate Longworth. Thanks so much for joining us here for the Lopes pregame show on Your View. Now, the Lopes opened conference action on Thursday with a huge win over Utah Valley, one of their rivals so far in this conference play. And the Lopes came out showing off in a big way. Meanwhile, Seattle University had a very competitive preseason, garnering 12 wins. However, in their WAC opener, they dropped the game at Bakersfield, which means really it's a wild, wild WAC, and every game counts, making the Lopes victory in that first conference showdown a big one. Yeah, it was huge for us. Uh, the whole week we were just talking about uh, it's a new season, going into WAC play, 0-0. Zero zero, so. We knew a good team in Utah Valley was coming in here, and we really wanted to start off conference play with a win. And uh, I thought our defense was uh, really good last night. Uh, got some key stops when we needed to. We rebounded pretty well, and uh, we executed when we had to. We really got on the boards and uh, made the winning plays. So we're uh, just moving forward now and getting ready for Seattle. As we were talking about all week, it's 0-0. Uh, start a whack play, so it's always good to get that first one, um, especially at home. We can't lose any home games. Uh, we know how tough the league is this year. Um, and so that was really important for us. It was extremely important, especially coming off a, a loss to San Diego. So we had to recoup and we, we had a tough week of practice with Coach getting on us and telling us what we really didn't want to hear. So I felt like that led to us playing really good on defense a little bit, but we still got room to step it up. All right, the Lopes did exactly what Dan Marley hoped. They went out there in that first game making a statement, but now they cannot let go. They cannot let up. It is time to keep the foot on the gas pedal and ready to speed into action just like that on a call it's our broadcast team Barry Patel Scott Williams come on in and guys I uh, I know we were excited poised ready for that game one and now you can't let that excitement wear off you've got to keep that same intensity with Seattle University in town yeah you really have to own your home court especially in a tough tough whack now because there were some teams knocked off that you didn't expect to be knocked off, and we'll talk about that throughout the course of the game tonight, but a big, big win over Utah Valley, a tough team. It was a huge win. I mean, this team came ready to play. They did what they had to do to win. It wasn't pretty at all, at all times, but they knuckled up on defense, and that's where they got the victory. How about the standings in the whack after just one game on Thursday evening? Bakersfield, Cal Baptist. Wow, shocker over New Mexico State, but look out for the Lancers. Welcome to the party. Yeah, I think that's probably the biggest shocker of all the games on Thursday night. You didn't know how Cal Baptist was going to come into the first time in the Western Athletic Conference, and they showed that they were ready to play, taking on the big boys in New Mexico State, taking them down. You know Utah Valley is going to be there. They dropped the opener against the Lopes here on Thursday, 71-60, to but rebounding a big factor for the Lopes here this season. It, it has been. I mean, I can always just say scoring looks pretty, defense wins games, but it's rebounding that wins championships, Barry, and that's what the Lopes have been doing this year. They are perfect 8-0 when they have controlled the glass and didn't have the winning rebounding margin. So it was nip and tuck down the stretch there, but they got the two-point plus margin there, victory on the glass, and they get the big win. L.A. Laver, 14 points in 26 minutes, but he was a little bit under the weather throughout the course of the game, and they got some help big time from Matt Jackson, a career night. Well, they need some guys to step up scoring, especially in that starting line of Matt Jackson filling in for Binky. He's done a wonderful job. He's just been real aggressive around the rim. A lot of power moves, attacking the basket, moving without the ball really well. I love this one where he puts the ball on the floor and just burns the defense right down the middle. And his teammates are looking for him. They get it going well after a while. They're looking for him. He went to the line, knocked down seven of eight free throws as well. There you see it, 31 minutes in the game, a career high 19, a plus 20 in the game for Matt Jackson, the redshirt senior from Melbourne, Australia. Seattle University comes in 12 and four. They had a great non-conference market, 12 and three. 
They've got some big boys, and they if they out-rebound teams, they win basketball games. You're perfect 12-0 when they out-rebound some out basketball teams. So they got to look a good job on the glass. they got to take care of this kid, Kavis. He's absolutely fantastic. He is lightning fast, putting the ball on the floor from the perimeter. He can shoot the three. Uh, and he's sneaky strong around the basket. I mean, you've got to really watch him work, you know, make him play in a crowd, run him off that three-point line, but don't let him get all the way to the paint. Rolled his ankle, did Mate Cavas. He uh, did come off the bench against Bakersfield in a uh, tough loss for the Red Hawks. So they come in a little bit angry here. But the Lopes will hope to go 2-0 to begin the Western Athletic Conference play before traveling to New Mexico State next Thursday. Kate, back to you. Well, guys, we made a lot about these first three games for the Lopes. It's not easy going up against three of the best teams in at the conference. But we did see on that opening night, Utah Valley here, they lost. Seattle University, as you mentioned, they dropped their WAC opener, as did New Mexico State. Now, my question for you, Scott, is how important is it to guard that home court knowing that this is going to be a pretty wild finish to the end with this WAC conference? Absolutely. you got to establish that winning spirit at home, and that's what the Lopes have done. They have won 18 of their last 19 here at GCU Arena. They've won 13 in a row, and they've won every game this season. So they know how important it is to defend the nest. Yeah, you're absolutely right. That's something Dan Marley is always preaching for this team, that they have a great environment to play in, and they need to show that off on the court. We'll see how that plays out tonight in just a few moments. But as we mentioned, Dan Marley, he is the mastermind behind this team. And coming up right after the break, he sits down with our Barry Michelle to talk about that big win against Utah Valley. You think it would be all rainbows, unicorns, sunshine? Uh, no, this is Dan Marley. He demands perfection. He's not satisfied yet. What will it take? Find out right after this. You know you want to. Don't be shy. You do it behind my back. So say it to my face. face. You don't know me. You know what I am? I'm a pitcher. I'm a striker. I'm a point guard. I'm a linebacker. I'm a setter. Shortstop. High jumper. Wrestler. Defender. Goalie. Student. Student athletes. That's who we are. GCU. Private, Christian, affordable, and nonprofit. Visit gcu.edu. Men's and women's teams as they try for their first NCAA tournament bids. The tournament is March 13th through the 16th at the Orleans Arena in fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada. Get your tickets now. The Wolves pregame show continues from GCU Arena this Saturday evening. It's game number two of conference play for head coach Dan Marley and the Lopes as they take on Seattle University. At First of all, coming off a very impressive win against Utah Valley on Thursday night. Yeah, it was a good win. Uh, always a little nervous when conference season opens up. And uh, to start off against a really good Utah Valley team, I think had won 10 of their last 11 games. Had been playing extremely well. Went to Fresno State and beat them. So we knew they had a lot of confidence. And I thought uh, we really concentrated. Came out defensively uh, really well. And then uh, one of the points of emphasis for us was to win the rebounding battle. And we did a great job of that in the first half. And uh, hung out to uh, hung on to win the rebounding battle and the battle of uh, of winning the game, which was important for us. You really shut down the tools since 13 points between Connor and Jake. Yeah, I thought our guys did a terrific job of uh, uh, you know paying attention to the scouting report. We know those two kids could really hurt us. Uh, Jake is a 50, 50, 90 guy. Uh, shoots 50 from the floor, 50 from the three, and about 87, 89 percent from the free throw line. So we really wanted to concentrate on not let, not letting those guys uh, have good nights, and uh, we did that. Matt Jackson definitely had a had a career night. 19 points for Matt. Matt was terrific. It started off early with the ball movement, with him cutting to the basket, a good seal there. And uh, you know, we really want to throw the ball inside, not just to Alessandro. And Matt's one of those guys who can post up and then did a really good job of moving without the basketball. They're using his athleticism, getting to the basket. So uh, really happy for Matt. This is a kid that's been here for five years, uh, been through a lot of surgeries and a lot of ups and downs. And 
a uh, guy that doesn't say a whole lot, uh, just puts his head down and works, and total team guy. So uh, you're really happy when he has success. I know after the game it came out uh, that uh, Ollie was a little bit under the weather. He gutted out that performance, didn't he? Yeah, he had been sick all the all night before and had missed shoot around and had some IVs before the game. So definitely wasn't feeling very well, but he gutted it out. We need the big fella down there. He, he made some uh, some big shots for us, uh, going through double teams, making some nice passes, didn't have a turnover, I believe. So uh, he's going to have to be big for us all conference season as he was last year. And hopefully we'll get help like we did from Matt, but Ollie's going to be the, voc uh, the focal point. The RPI numbers for the WAC are moving up 16-17 uh, right now in the, in the nation. The top, maybe, uh, well, three of the top four teams fell on opening night. This, this conference is going to be tooth and nail. Well, the conference has gotten really good. And like most conferences, it's, it's not going to be easy to win, whether you're at home or, or on the road, but especially when you go on the road. It doesn't matter who you're going to play. You're going to have to play really good basketball. I mean, New Mexico State goes to Cal Baptist, who's in their first year, and you got to know that they were excited, and they got a terrific player there that had 36. So uh, you're really going to have to be on your uh, best game, especially when you go on the road, and you can't take any win for granted. Defensively, your team's playing pretty well. I don't want to jinx anything. 60 and a half points per game. Defense has always been kind of a, a, a motto of, of GC basketball yeah. with Dan Marlin. Yeah, and we got to get back to that. We really struggled early in the year. Um, with assignments, uh, more mental than anything. And uh, now that we've had uh, struggles by scoring the basketball, I told our guys that you can really hang your hat on, on two things, which is rebounding and playing defense. And that's what we did last year. And uh, these last two games particularly, we've been really good. Uh, San Diego was a, a terrific uh, offensive team. We held them to 61 points and 41% uh, shooting. And same thing with Utah Valley, a really efficient offensive team. and. Uh, we did a great job, I thought, defensively of really locking in and playing hard for 40 minutes. And that's what we're going to have to do tonight. Seattle is a team that can really score the basketball. They break you down one-on-one, -on -one, isolation basketball. So they're effic very efficient offensively, and they're a very good defensive team. So this is going to be a heck of a challenge. Yeah, and they come in hungry after a tough loss uh, at uh, Bakersfield on Thursday. Yeah, like I said, it's, every game is going to be good. And uh, uh, when you're playing GCU, uh, they're going to want to beat us. Yeah. And, you know, we've, we've swept uh, Seattle the last two years. Uh, we went 4-0, uh, so I know they're going to come in. Hayford's done a great job there, and they're going to want to start the season off 1-1, one one, as you said, as they've lost to Bakersfield. So this will be a great contest. They got some transfers from American and also Seton Hall, Miles Carter and Matei Cavas, a little banged up, but it looks like he'll be back in action tonight. Yeah, Carter is a guy from Seton Hall, big guy, very athletic, block shots, uh, can score around the basket. That's going to be a big test for our guys. And then really everybody on the floor, especially those first first five guys, can break you down and score. Uh, Kavas has been hurt a little bit, but I'm sure he'll play tonight. Uh, he is a one of the best players we have here in the WAC. Uh, an all preseason uh, first team WAC guy, uh, six eight, can score it, can put it on the floor. Terrific shooter, gets to the free throw line. So as I said, all five guys that start for that team, uh, they're going to be a handful. They don't have a lot of depth. So uh, we're gonna, just going to have to play for hard and ways for 40 minutes. All right. Well, good luck tonight, right, Coach. Thank you. Head Coach Dan Marley, our guest here with us. More of the Lopes pregame show continues from GCU Arena on this Saturday evening. It's hard to decide what the top five sports moments of 2018 were for the GCU athletic program. But Lopes insider Paul Coro was up for the task. The top five coming up next. So stick around. Watch Ask GCU, where we answer your questions every week. And the points don't matter. Wait, what? Tune in every week for answers to be questioned. Where we answer your questions in a common, pro in a, all right. Common professional <laughs> Tweet hashtag Ask GCU to get your question featured.
welcome back. Well, any of you Havocs that are enjoying those final 24 hours at home with the family before school starts, I know you have your phone in hand, so be sure to find us using the hashtag LopesUp. We are on Twitter and Instagram waiting to hear from you. And you don't have to be a student at GCU. You can just be a fan of the sports or a past student, whatever it is, or perhaps a future student. Just be a part of the fun. If you're not here at GCU Arena, jump online, find us, and hey, you'll still be a part of the broadcast. I'm Kate Longworth here with the Lopes pregame show on Your View. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. And 2017-2018 sports seasons will forever be etched in GCU history. It was the first time the athletic programs were eligible for Division I postseason action. And many school firsts were achieved from January through December of last year. So what were the top moments of 2018? It's a tough job to figure that out, but we put Lopes insider Paul Coro up to the task, and here's what he came up with. Drum roll, please. Top five of 2018. Hi, I'm GCU insider Paul Coro, and it's been a breakthrough year in Lopes athletics. GCU took it to another level in 2018 many times, but here are our top five moments of the year. On March 9th, the men's basketball team made its first entry into the WAC basketball tournament in Las Vegas and earned a spot in the championship game when it beat Utah Valley 75-60 in the semifinals. The defense was so good that head coach Dan Marley had a little extra pop in his step when he jumped with the Havocs during the postgame celebration. On April 18th, there was more jumping jubilation when the WAC Women's Golf Championship came down to the final stroke on the final hole in Phoenix. GCU freshman Siri Pachana won the individual conference tournament title, but also clinched the team championship and an NCAA regional spot when she sank her putt on 18 and got showered with affection by her teammates and head coach Lauren Jacecki. On May 18th, the baseball team did it again when Jake Repovich recorded his 20th career win at Seattle. For the second consecutive season, GCU won every conference series and claimed the regular season WAC title under head coach Andy Stankiewicz. A week later in May, Tom Flood's track and field team that swept WAC men's and women's indoor and outdoor team titles had a historic day at the NCAA West preliminaries. Pole vaulter Scott Marshall, long jumper Marcus Flanagan, and javelin thrower Jesse Newman all qualified for the NCAA championships. Newman went on to finish ninth in the nation to be put on the All-America second team. And the capper came on November 11th when the men's soccer team went on an incredible late season run that gave Shellis Heinemann the fifth most coaching wins in NCAA men's soccer history and put the Lopes in the NCAA tournament. GCU shut out every WAC tournament opponent during the tournament, including a 1-0 championship victory against San Jose State in Seattle to head to NCAAs. And it's early in the new year. However, GCU Athletics already making things happen. We saw the Lopes get their first whack win. What will happen tonight? We'll find out as the Lopes pregame show continues. And when we come back, Susan Animal from Cox Communication steps in to talk with us about Connect to Compete. If you haven't heard about this program, you want to sit tight. It's pretty special. Curiosity fuels you. It helps you understand the world around you. It's your guide through life. So when you're ready for a fulfilling new career, let your curiosity fuel that change. Change is difficult, but Grand Canyon University's online degree programs in technology make it convenient for you to achieve your dream. While businesses are being transformed by artificial intelligence and analytics, GCU teaches you how to plan for innovation and make sense of the world. By applying that knowledge to today's most challenging problems and sharing your insights, you're helping to build a better tomorrow for you, your community, and your family. Find your purpose at GCU, where advanced technologies drive education. Private, Christian, affordable, nonprofit. Visit gcu.edu slash online. Welcome back. Purple pregame party in action tonight at GCU Arena. A lot of families in the community out here tonight to see what the Lopes can do with Seattle University in town and even some Havocs in the house after their post-holiday celebrations. And now I 
am joined by a very special guest here on the Lopes pregame show. Susan Animal stopping by from Cox. She's the vice president of Pu public and government affairs. And thank you so much for being here tonight. It's a very special night for Cox because you guys have a great relationship with GCU. And you started this incredible program for low income families. Take me through what it's all about. Yeah, so we're here tonight promoting a program that Cox has been a part of for a number of years called Connect to Compete. And what that is, is it's a program that offers low-cost internet service to low-income families because we believe that no child should fall behind in school simply because they don't have access to internet in their home. It's amazing to see that need for different families out there and to give them what the children need to thrive in the school system here. How do families qualify? Yes, yeah, so our families that are eligible for the Connect to Compete program are basically families with school-aged children in the home who are eligible for the free or reduced lunch program or they live in housing or they are eligible for SNAP or TANF benefits. So those are the families that would be eligible. All right, and if uh, you're out there watching and you know someone who could uh, benefit from this, we want to make sure you see that number on the bottom of your screen, 855-222-3252, as well as www.cox.com slash low-cost internet. And I think it's very valuable that you guys saw this need because you referenced it, that students in school right now, the internet has become such a way to, to thrive and to look up things for homework, to connect with your friends, everything they're doing on the internet, whether it's phone, computer. How important was it for you guys to fill this need for those folks? Yeah, you know, with seven out of 10 teachers, um, assigning homework to students that requires access to the internet, we know it's essential that those families have internet in the home. And with this offer, the families can have the internet service for $9.95 per month. There's no contract, there's no installation fees. We give them a free Wi-Fi modem rental, and they have access to our Wi-Fi network all around town. So it really enables those students to get the access that they need to succeed in school. Since launching Connect to Compete, what success stories have you seen? So since we started the program nationwide, over 250,000 families have been able to connect through this program. And we also know that talking with these families that have been part of the program, we recently conducted a survey and those families shared back with us that 91% of them felt like this program is helping their kids achieve graduation. And 89% believe that it has actually improved their children's grades. So we know that this is, is driving results and we know how critically important it is because the families have told us that. You're, you're definitely making uh, some happy parents, it sounds like, but what other tools do you have for those families and the parents specifically? Sure. Obviously, having access to the internet is important, but knowing how to use it and how to be safe when you're using it is, is equally as important. So we also have a program co called the Cox Digital Academy, and that is actually available to anyone, not just our Connect to Compete families, but it is um, a program with some tools that enable families to be able to surf online safely, to um, access social media safely and to have some basic skills and tools on how to use the internet to its maximum of capabilities. And tonight you guys are out here at the game with the presidents. You even had a booth during the tailgate parties. Uh, what is your relationship with GCU? Why is it important to be out here and to be with the community and showing them what this is all about? Well, Cox has long had a business relationship with GCU, but we really wanted to transcend that and become partners in the community. GCU has a wonderful reputation for supporting families in the community community where GCU is and we have an equally uh, committed passion towards those families as well and making sure that the families with kids that live in the valley have an opportunity not only to have access to the internet but maybe someday come to GCU and so Cox is supporting the scholarship program here to help make that happen as well. A win-win all around, and now we're just hoping for a win behind us once the ball tips off. Thank you so much, Susan, for being with us. And as we head to break, we still have more action to come. We're going to talk about the WAC and what it all is about with this competition after we saw some big teams lose in that opener. But right now, we want you to win. If you are at home and needing help, we want you to know the resources are there. Follow that phone number and the website there, and you can get help with the Connect to Compete. And as I mentioned, you don't have to even leave the couch, but we're going to take a trip around the WAC when we come back. Performance is your profession. You excel in bringing the best out of people. Through leadership and insight, you help others fulfill their promise. You share a unique bond with your family and cherish your time together. But you strive to take the next step in your career. 
GCU's online degree program in performance psychology will enhance your skills in helping others succeed. Master your craft in an online PhD program that puts innovation and technology at the heart of education. And you can do it all within a tight schedule without disrupting other aspects of your life. With a PhD in performance psychology, you'll have the tools you need to elevate your performance to the next level. When human excellence meets cutting edge technology, business advances. Find your purpose at GCU, where advanced technologies drive education. Private, Christian, affordable, nonprofit. Visit gcu.edu slash online. We're counting you down to tip off for Dan Marley's men's basketball team, but head coach Nicole Powell and the GCU women's basketball team, they're out to conquer the Western Athletic Conference this season as well. They're on the road this weekend to start conference play. We'll check in on their action in just a moment. But then they will take on arch rivals New Mexico State at home Thursday, January 10th, 6 p.m. tip off. Great seats are still available for the game. Come on out to GCU Arena and cheer on the lows. And meanwhile, the purple pregame party is just getting started right behind me. I'm Kate Longworth here on the Lopes pregame show. And uh, we have been talking about how competitive this Wild Wild Black is, and that showed up on the court Thursday night in many WAC openers. The top three teams, New Mexico State, Seattle University, Utah Valley, they lost. GCU is, of course, in the mix. Many of those teams in action tonight. So let's take a look at how the WAC is shaping up now with two games in the books. We'll wait to see the start and finish of this one, of course. But first, Chicago State fell victim at Kansas City, 80-72, a final there. As you see, Cal Baptist is hosting UTRGV. And Utah Valley taking that loss they got from GCU and trying to get their first conference victory at Bakersfield tonight, 8 p.m. tip-off. Meanwhile, a big congratulations to Nicole Powell and the Lopes. They got their first conference win at Seattle. 56-53, the final there in overtime. Meanwhile, no, that is not incorrect what you're reading right now on your screen. Kansas City did get the win over Chicago State. 111 to 58, the final there. Impressive basketball. They were pretty hot from the on the arc, as you can see. Now, let's take a look at the top 25 when it comes to college basketball landscape. Duke leading the way, followed by Michigan, Tennessee, Virginia, and Kansas rounding out the top five. In the next five, we've got Nevada, Gonzaga, Michigan State, Florida, and Virginia Tech. Moving on to the next 10, where you will find Texas Tech in the 11th spot, Auburn in that 12th spot, Kentucky, number 13, Ohio State 14, and Scott Williams Tar Heels at number 15. They did get the big victory today. The final there was 85-60 over Pittsburgh. Meanwhile, Florida stayed there at that ninth spot we mentioned. They fell at Virginia, 65-52, a final there. And the final teams in the top 25, Indiana, Wisconsin, Oklahoma, Nebraska, and Iowa sneaking in there. A lot of representation from the big three with the big 10 and the big East. 12. All right, here it's a big party, and everyone is ready for tip off. The band is back, the Havocs are back, and we will be right back with the action. Mary and Scott will be calling it all as the Wolves take to the court against the Red Hawks of Seattle University. We'll be right back. A local credit union serving the Valley for over 65 years can assist you in buying your first home, refinancing your current home, or if you're dreaming of a retirement home. Canyon State Credit Union can provide you with a fast and affordable solution that meets your needs. Let Canyon State Credit Union run the numbers on your dream. Visit CanyonStateCU.org or call 623-580-6015 for more information. Canyon State Credit Union, committed to you. We do business in accordance with the Equal Credit Opportunity Act, MLS number 410376. You use the latest technology to treat patients, but your care and compassion is timeless. Advancing your career means helping more patients and providing even more care. Grand Canyon University's online programs in nursing make it convenient for you to become the expert every patient deserves. 
Find your purpose at GCU, where advanced technologies drive education. Private, Christian, affordable, and nonprofit. Visit gcu.edu. Live from the heart and soul of Phoenix, welcome to the campus of Grand Canyon University and inside GCU Arena where tonight the Lopes will look to begin conference play with their second straight win as they play host to the Seattle University Red Hawks. Hello and welcome to GCU Basketball. Barry Vitell alongside three-time NBA champion Scott Williams. Kate Longworth will be along in just a moment. Now the Lopes are riding high here on their home court after a very impressive victory over Utah Valley on Thursday night. Yeah, they're really hot right now. They basically won that game wire to wire, and they did it with defense. Did an outstanding job really limiting the three-point opportunities for Utah Valley, which was one of their strengths coming in tonight. Just three of 15 from the arc. 40 to 38, the rebounding margin. That's been the decisive measure, the statistic to look at for the Lopes in their victory column. Matt Jackson, a big story in the game on Thursday, a career high 19. Jackson 5 was wheeling and dealing. He did a fantastic job just being aggressive right from the very beginning. Anytime there was a double team, he went right to the front of the rim. It was strong with the finish. Got himself fouled a couple times, went to the foul line where he knocked down his free throw, 7 of 8 from the free throw line. There you see it, 31 minutes, 19 points, 8 rebounds, and a plus 20 on the floor from Matt Jackson. Seattle University 12 and 4 coming in, a very impressive 12 and 3 mark before losing at Bakersfield on Thursday. They're led by Matei Kavas. <laughs> Matei like the pate, because this guy can absolutely do it. Shoot it from the outside, you come out on him too strong, he blows by you, he goes to the rim. He's a thief on defense, and he's sneaky strong at finishing around the rim. Coming back after rolling his ankle, came off the bench against Bakersfield. We'll keep an eye on Kavas as well as some other players that are doing the job for Jim Hayford and the Red Hawks. Time to get it all started. Let's go down to the public address announcer, Paul Denuser, with our prayer and our national anthem. Between the Red Hawks of Seattle University and your Grand Canyon University Antelopes. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we ask that you all please rise. Gentlemen, please remove your caps as we begin this evening's competition with a word of prayer. Tonight's prayer is led by Corey Tubbs, chaplain for GCU Athletics. Father in heaven, we thank you for this opportunity tonight to come together and enjoy this competition among friends and family. We pray that you be with the players and the refs and all who are participating tonight, that you would just help keep them safe and free from injury so that they can perform to the best of their abilities. And we pray that you be with us as we enjoy this game, that this would be a space where all are respected and that you are honored. We pray these things in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Corey. Fans, please remain standing as we now honor America with the singing of the national anthem. The Star Spangled Banner will be performed this evening by the Arizona Cantalina Chorale under the direction of David Ty.
thank you. That is the Arizona Cantalina Corral. Wow, very impressive anthem by the Arizona Cantalina Corral. The prayer from Corey Tubbs, a GCU athletics chaplain. Seattle University comes in 12 and 4, 0 and 1 in the whack after losing 83 71 at Bakersfield on Thursday. Their head coach is that man, Jim Hayford, in his second season, some 19 plus seasons as a coach in collegiate athletics. 392 victories. Here is Coach Hayford's starting five. We begin with Mate Cabas, Morgan Means, Terrell Brown, Delante Jones, and Miles Carter. Yeah, a lot of ways we could go here, uh, Jones, Carter, but we're going to look at Morgan Means. His kid has absolutely been on fire. 6'3", 175 pound junior guard. He is second in the conference in scoring at 16.3 points per game. He knows how to get to the foul line. He's 16 to 16 at Cal on the 29th. A 40 year record he uh, tied from Seattle University. And he leads the conference in free throw percentage shooting 88%. Time now for GCU. Dan Marley's starting five, brought to you by Dignity Health. Hello, human kindness. Trey Drexel, Damari Milstead, Oscar Freyer, Matt Jackson, and Alessandro Labor. And we'll be looking at Milstead this one. He was absolutely fantastic against Utah Valley University. Eight points, eight assists, three big steals. He turned into buckets for himself. Got a chance to talk to Oscar Freyer before the game. I said, who is going to start on means? He said, that's Milstead's job. So we'll look to see if Milstead can do the job on means tonight. Slow him down, make it tough for him every time he's got the ball in his hands. Head coach Dan Marley in his sixth season as head coach. The associate head coach, Lewis Wilson. The assistant coaches are Chris Carvalone and TJ Benson. Director of basketball operations is Jesse Parker. Special assistant to the head coach, Johnny Hill. The video coordinator is Matt Lopez. And the graduate assistant is Dylan Adolgo. Lopes 8-6, 1-0 after a win here on their home court against Utah Valley, 71-60 on Thursday evening. Trip to Las Cruces next Thursday. As the Lopes will head on to their first conference road trip next week. They need to take care of business on their home court here tonight. Now for our Sanders and Ford keys to the game. The best play on a new Ford is at Sanders and Ford. Yeah, there you know I like the Pacific Northwest, oh. especially Seattle. So we got a Seattle themed keys tonight. Space Needle. Hey, Seattle likes to run and gun space the floor. Scored a whopping 81 and a half points a game and shoot almost 40% from three. GCU must get back on defense, find shooters in transition, and establish the tempo that plays to their advantage. And Pearl Jam, great fan, right, oh, Barry? Yeah, right. GCU's not a good three-point shooting team, though. No. Their strength is jamming the ball inside with post-ups and drives, get labor going early, and then pike play smart. That's where they got the ball. Oh, yeah, fish market, fish. All that. Yeah, Absolutely, yeah, yeah. right? So GCU's bench, they've been up and down this year. They have to play especially well at home. You know, they can't stink to join up tonight. Oh, yeah. They got to get off. They got to do it with uh, story. They got to do it with uh, defense, and they must rebound the basketball when they're on the floor. We are underway in Phoenix. Brent Moe, Eric Anderson, and Ryan McDaniel are the officials. Inside, Carter goes left, goes right, too heavy. Jackson with the rebound. Good solid defense. Got tough with a left shoulder uh, turn, right hand hook. But challenge the shot without fouling. So important. GC never fouls. They're like the least amount of fouling team in the WAC. Off of labor, out of bounds. Pressure was applied by Miles Carter, the transfer from Seton Hall, the 6'9, 230 redshirt junior. Yeah, the other thing they do fewer than any other team in the WAC is turn the ball over. <laughs> yeah. Wouldn't you know they turn it over on their first possession tonight? Morgan Means. He's trouble. Drives in the paints high. Not there again. Maddie Jackson doing the job, sliding his feet. 
Dressel brings it out. It stands on their feet till GCU hits their opening bucket. Labor just beyond the up line. Freyer comes back his way. Now to the left. Milstead leaves for Jackson. Drexel pulls down. Shot clock at 11. Long range shot. Too heavy. Rebound. Drexel battles after it. Loose ball. Seattle picks it up. Seattle scrappy. Yeah, they're scrappy on the boards as well. They have plus two uh, advantage coming into this one against GCU. And, and that'll rebound most of their opponents. They're 12 and 0 when they out rebound their opponents, much like GCU. They're 8 0 when they out rebound their opponents. Delonte Jones from long distance. Yeah, he's another one of those guys in that starting lineup. Jones, Carter, uh, to Kabash, and uh, Means. You've got to watch all four of those guys. They like to fill up that stat sheet. He and Terrell Brown led all scores for Seattle against Bakersfield with 18. He's a transfer from American University. Prayer, nice move to the left. No chance for that after Miles Carter got his hand on it. Carl swatted that one with a, a nasty mindset behind it, like flipped that one over by the wow. uh, pom poms. He's Real a, fast. He's got an intense look on his face. Yeah, they're ready to play. They're yeah. upset about losing that game at Bakersfield. Prayer looking for the Lopes bucket. Ball oh, doesn't go. Labor can't get there. Yeah, 0 for 2 right now behind the arc. I mean, I, I, they were 4 for 24 shooting the ball on Thursday night against the Utah Valley. They got to try to get that ball inside. Brown tries to drop on Drexel. Not enough for Oak. Back out. Jones. Looks to the corner, it goes. Off of the rim by Morgan Means, picked up by Drexel. Drexel, Drexel rather, to his left, Labor. Backing in. Well, Miles Carter. A little too much body that time. Dre I mean, excuse me. Yeah. Labor does a nice job just taking his time right here. He said, okay, I'm going to bang you with my left shoulder and try to keep working my way back to the front of the rim. Carter has to put two hands on him. Labor's a load down there. Lopes have had the Red Hawks number 10 and 1. Step back, Labor. Oh, short. Lopes fans want to take a load off here, people. That's right. They stand until Juice Who makes the first field goal. Delonte with a spin move. Picked up by Layer. Milstead on the run. Pass. Jackson underneath. Kicks back out Labor for three. Good! Take a shot. I gotta love that. Get the ball in transition. Race it down the floor. Anytime the Lopes get that ball below the free throw line, the defense got to shrink. Leaves Labor wide open from the arc. Driving high off the glass and not there for Brown. Rebound, Drexel. Drexel near side, back out, Jackson inside. Down low, Labor. He's fouled. Well, it doesn't matter who's got the assignment to stop Labor. They're, Lopes are throwing it into him and letting the big fella go to work down there. And he's probing and probing. Now that's second. Seattle University team foul. Jones picks up his first. Inbound quickly. Prayer doesn't go. Open look. Yeah, good baseline out of bounds play. Uh, Dan Marley special has his team well coached on executing underneath the basket. Prayer got a hand on the pass by Terrell Brown. Brown picked up his fifth double double at Bakersfield. Yeah, both teams off to a cold start right now. One for five for Seattle University and one of six for the Lopes. Means comes back left. The box. Back out. Inside, Carter trying to move on Labor. A five goes in. <laughs> that was power move right there. Mm -hmm. no, nothing pretty about that. Just hit the horn and eh, eh, just tanked his way right. Trucked his way right to the basket. Milstead, bounce pass, Jackson, reverse off the window. Uh, Jackson hanging out in that short little porch there, just right outside the key. And Milstead does a nice job having court vision. He had eight assists on Thursday night. Nice dime, he dropped right there to Jackson for the easy two. Jones leaves for Cabas. Cabas 
long distance, and he's familiar from that territory. 36 of 82 coming in, 44%. Yeah, if your toes aren't uh, close to that three-point line, he's going to pull up. He'll shoot it from two, three feet behind the arc. Doesn't matter to him. Labor busts through, doesn't go. Carter with the rebound. Now, another job, Labor going inside. There was some contact, but the officials let them play around the basket because Carter had some contact on his play up in the hoop just a moment ago as well. Morgan Means goes left to Rel Brown. Brown bounce pass, Cavas inside the arc. Ooh, look out, McKay with a couple of buckets here. Yeah, they're starting to heat up after that slow start to come down and knock down a bunch of mid range and long range jump shots. Licking split, now all of a sudden they're back up by five. Milstead, Jackson. Milstead leaves for Freyer. Freyer, Jackson, Labor, working the arc. Drexel, looking for some room inside the arc. Good by Trey Drexel, they needed it. Yeah, they needed a cool 7-2 mini sport by Seattle, and Coach Marley not panicking. He knows his team's gonna you know, pick up the pace here in a little bit, but nice job there, getting that mid-range jumper off the right wing, one they practiced hundreds of times throughout the course of the week. Milstead got a hand on it. Out of bounds in the first time out here in the opening half, 14.05. Milstead. One more time here, Milstead penetrating, and you can see Matt Jackson's guy's got to come over and stop that drive, and he goes right to the front of the basket. Down to Kay Longworth. All right, thank you guys. I am joined by Tacey Ashby of the GCU Strategic Educational Alliance. And tonight is Alliance Appreciation Night. What is that all about? It's a great night. It's, a, it's an opportunity to show appreciation to all of our educational partners in the K-12 arena. We have many from the public district and charter world, from the Catholic and Christian schools, from home schools, probably about 1,500 throughout Arizona. We have partnerships with actually 7,500 across the nation and world. And it's our chance to say, come on out and enjoy a game, and thank you for all that you do. And not that being here tonight is not enough, but what are some of the other benefits of being a part of the Alliance program? We look for any way that we can come, in, come alongside and support our K-12 partners. So that can include anything from scholarships to program discounts to, for uh, adult learners, to dual enrollment, to professional development, to opportunities for students that introduce them to our campus. So we just want to help them in any way that we can. And can you expand just a bit on the alliance relationships you guys have? Absolutely. We're really pleased with all of our relationships because it helps to build that bond between the K-12 world and post a vision for post-secondary education. Um, but you will be hearing from Teresa Killingsworth later tonight, principal at Westwood School. It's the first of our academic excellence sites, and it's really an opportunity to pour everything we can into that school, from our learning labs to our college of education to everything we do in our department. So you'll enjoy hearing from them. Well, thank you so much for giving us your time, Tacey, and thanks for the great work that the Strategic Education Alliance is doing. We appreciate your time and everything you do for the community. Thank you for the opportunity to be here. Guys? Thank you very much. Great outreach, great partnership. We've got to do this together. Seattle on top by three early here in Phoenix. The boss kicked back out. Short air ball. Alex said have returned to campus. They no doubt let him know. Drexel driving. Doesn't go. Goodness, I don't know how he made his way all the way to the bucket. Yeah, it looks really struggling right now for the field. Just three of ten. Seattle started one of five, now three of five. 13-24 in county. Milstead for Jackson. Labor, he's got some room. Doesn't go. <laughs> Drexel, they got Drexel coming in over the back. He likes to get on that offensive glass, uh, which sure Coach Barley loves as well, coming in from the guard spot there, trying to help out some of the big, get those extra possessions. They know how important rebounding is in this basketball game. Labor takes a seat. Michael Finke comes in off the bench. 
Kabas. Both of them have hurt a little bit with injuries. Kabas with the ankle, a flip for, for Finke. Kabas driving, though. That ankle looks good. Left hand, teardrop. That's why I say his, his first step is quick. Now, he got a size advantage there. We had Matt Jackson on him, but still, someone's got to help him out. Oh, another turnover for GC, their fourth of the game. Freyer gets called. Back-to-back -back games. This one, he might be a little more upset with the officiating. I don't know where Freyer was at in that picture there. I'm not sure if that wasn't on Matt Jackson. He, he kind of maybe with something off the ball. Means leaves it there. Kavas turns around. Travel. Back to back turnovers. And just no damage done. If you're a Lopes fan, they're going to get Drexel out of this one. And Carlos Johnson, who's been kind of a instant offense off of that GCU bench at times, comes in to see if we can get this thing uh, ignited. Jackson moves left now. He's going to give it to Carlos. Carlos beyond the arc. Looked inside. And now he checks back to Jackson. Milstead moves left. Stops. Pops. Good. Come on, Milstead. Nice job by Milstead. He used a couple foot fakes there to freeze a defender just long enough to create some space for his, his little mid range jumper that he likes. Means. Brown back out. Jones for three. Oh, yeah, Glenn, you know, Frere's a little upset with him because, help because he knew that uh, he'd given too much space on that three-point shot. And this team is red hot from behind that arc. They're shooting almost 40% as a team from behind the arc. Freer wants three. Give it to him! Well, got uh, Freer <laughs> making up for that mistake almost instantly. He gave up a three, and then he goes back down and calls his own number for a three. Tim Finke at the scorer's table. That short doesn't hit. Milstead, near side. Back out front, open floater. He loves that shot. Yeah. Just when Seattle had put on a little spurt and built themselves a small cushion, Lopes come right back with three field goals of their own to cut it to one. Turns around, looks to feed Carter. Carter off the mark. Yeah, they Great got deep. away with one that time. Fiki was front in the post, but Oscar was hooked up on his man over here on the weak side. He didn't get over to challenge that shot enough. He just got lucky that he just missed it. Michael Finky backing in, kicks out Jackson. Back into Michael, turn around, shot. Rings out. Rebound picked up by Terrell Brown. Yeah, I think he loves that little mid-range shot right there. He's had a couple of those on Thursday night. Hayford just getting on the floor, walking up the court with his... Marley's like, what are you doing, man? He's on the officials about it as well. It was almost like the Golden State Warriors keeping the ball in. Giving some instructions up the sidelines to his players. It paid off. They went to the basket. I think they got a hoop and a harm. Good gracious. 10-16 to go on a uh, interesting opening half. 17-14 now. Seattle on top of GCU. Keep it right here. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time. You know you want to. Don't be shy. You do it behind my back. So say it to my face. Hey, you don't know me. You know what I am? I'm a pitcher. I'm a striker. I'm a point guard. I'm a linebacker. I'm a setter. I'm shortstop. High jumper. Wrestler. Defender. Goalie. Student. Student athletes. That's who we are. <laughs> yeah! Do you want to be on Ask GCU? Twitter raffle. Apple. Tweet us your questions, and the person with the best question is going to get featured on the next episode with the crew. My dudes. What are you doing? <laughs> People don't like us very much, it seems. Yeah, Tweet hashtag AskGCU to get your question featured.
TCU men's basketball, basketball game is brought to you in part by Dignity Health, Hello Human Kindness, and by Sanderson Ford. The best play at a new Ford is at Sanderson Ford. Well, Coach uh, Hayford, uh, right before our timeout, making his way up, kind of a sixth man on the court here. Well, you know, this is a 19-year veteran <laughs> veteran coach. Yeah, whatever you need. Uh, you know, he's a tick under 400 on, wins uh, for his career, so he pulled out all the stops on the road tonight. He's not trying to drop two road games to start the Western Athletic Conference. Coach Marley didn't like it at all. He's still talking to the official. The Elopes only one offensive rebound. Seattle doesn't have any. So indeed, it was a hoop and a harm. Morgan Means, 88% free throw shooter. Whoa. That, that, wow. that stopped a long streak of, what, 27 straight? 27 straight. I, I didn't think you'd see this kid miss the whole month of January the way he's been throwing it in the basket. I don't think he missed a free throw against Cal and their victory over Cal. Martin for three. Oh, my. It's going to be that kind of a night. Now, my favorite part, he, he's really got to pick up his scoring. And generally, if he gets that first one to go, good things happen for him for the rest of the game. So. Nice to see him come off the pine and knock down a three, knock this thing back up at 17. That is Nemesis here. He drained that one. Carter trying to work on Ficky, just doesn't drop. That's where I'd like to see Drex push that ball into that scoring area. Maybe they don't get anything, but move it up a little faster. You don't want to get into a shootout, but get it down to that scoring area a little quicker. Uh-oh, that That's pass. That was a Karen pass by Carlos Johnson. So let them play. Now they fall a little tighter out there, 35 feet from the basket. And Carlos Johnson gets whistled for his first, fourth team foul on the Lopes. The Lopes got to do a better job taking care of the basketball. That's six turnovers already here in the early going. Seattle University has zero. Only nine on Thursday against Utah Valley in the entire game. That means back out. Shutting that down, he's going to have to try to take it himself. Unsuccessful. You do a good job to fit it at the rim. I mean, Seattle's getting some good looks around that basket in that three to five foot range, and they're coming up empty more times than not. Drexel takes it to the hole. Uh, lead change. GCU gets on top here. And Coach Hafer just wants a timeout real quick as he sees his lead just evaporate. Drexel, the Wooden Bill, Washington native, puts the Lopes on top by two. Yeah, Drexel's a feisty little guy. He, he realized I got some friends and family back there checking this one out. I got to show out. He's been down on the floor diving for ball, scrapping a couple times already in this one. I like that one. Takes it to the, the rack and takes on a little contact and finishes. His numbers on the season there, nine and point three points per game he's done a nice job too in that starting group making sure everybody kind of gets involved getting that ball to his big labor underneath labor's been working out folks on a 10-2 run five of their last six from the field and a labor i saw a stat where he's one of four players in gcu history that has scored 25 plus points in consecutive games Mayor Oscar Frere was one. Wayne Russell, he has, he's one of the players. I can't remember the fourth guy now. Pretty long time back. Kill, killer? Killian or something like that? Killian Larson. Yeah, Killian Larson. Charge. Who is that? Drexel. <laughs> Big down there again, taking a charge. I, I thought for sure it might have been a number 42 over there, Martin, but this time Drexel gets outside that restricted area. Gets his feet established and takes that blow square in the chest. I'd say between the numbers, but he's only got one number on his jersey there. Yep. So that's a good job by him playing that weak side defense. Getting some good minutes here in the first half. Monte Jones trying to take it through Drexel. Remember, Labor had 30 against Seattle. Up by Carlos Johnson. Who had a That kid is 
too big, too strong, too fast for a lot of these players in this Western Athletic Conference. And he bails players out sometimes, teams out when he shoots a three. This is what he needs to do. Put his chin strap on and just take it right to the rack. The engine's starting to get a little warmer. Lopes seven points off of turnovers. That's three fouls on Delonte Jones. Averaging 12.4 points per game. After the starting five, gets a little thin for Coach Hayford and Seattle. Jones in trouble. Yeah, big job. Uh, they, they, they lose Jones, Carter, Cabas, and uh, Means. They're, they really struggle to score. Up for Carlos from Drexel underneath. Foul. Oh, I think they got a jump ball. Jump ball. 13 2 run for GCU. Carlos. Yeah. 7.56 on the clock remaining in this opening half. Damari Milstead has been playing really well as of late. Leads the Lopes with 20 steals, 48 assists. A guy that had to take a seat early on for GCU in the season with Trey Drexel. Then they put both of them on the court for GCU, but Damari Milstead has responded to the challenge. He's been absolutely wonderful. Some guys go to that bench and they start to sulk. Uh, Milstead, he's responded, like you said, with harder nose play and taking care of the basketball for the most part. He gets the people involved in the offense. Knows he's not a great scorer, but he's a capable scorer, so he takes a lot of pressure off the team when he, he looks to be aggressive, but also looks to get a lot of guys involved as well. What he does so well, too, on the defensive end is get into the passing lanes, gets his hands on balls, causes deflections or grabs steals, and that ignites his offense to the other direction as well. Western Athletic Conference basketball tournament tickets are now on sale. Come support both the men's and women's teams as they try for their first NCAA tournament bids. Tournament March 13th through the 16th at the Orleans Arena in Las Vegas, Nevada. Get your tickets right now. Always enjoyable. Last year's trip. All the way to the championship in the first year of eligibility for the men's team. They took on New Mexico State. They'll be taking them on in Las Cruces next Thursday. A few bus loads will be making their way from Phoenix. National programs will be featured by the cheer dance teams here. At halftime, the fabulous job along with the GCU pep band. Emily Stevens with cheer, GK Cook with the dance teams, and Paul Cook with GCU's Thundering Herd pep band. Gets this crowd rocking and rolling every game. Absolutely. Yeah, GCU, I tell you what, they've been rocking and rolling that painted area tonight. They're playing some big man basketball down there. Ten points in that painted area. They're plus four on the rebounds right now. And they have not allowed an offensive rebound tonight. So important. And the Johnson turn around and good. CJ said, listen, I can take you up on the dribble. They can post me up. I'm just going to jump over you or I'm going to blow by you right now. is doing a great job. They got eight points off of that bench. Johnson working to Campo. That's off the glass. Underneath. Loose ball to Campo. Doesn't come up with it. Drexel steps up over. Oh, come from behind. <laughs> Terrell Brown, look out. First Terrell and Brown. 10 at the 40. What's going on out here? We playing, uh, I know Seattle Seahawks are playing uh, football tonight. Are the Red Hawks playing a little football as well? Look at these guys going after. They know how important it is, this game right here. They're leaving it all out here on the floor. It's going to be interesting in this conference because every game is going to be critical, especially to hold serve, as you've mentioned, on your home court. Yeah, it'll be tough to win on the road. I mean, Cal Baptist proved that. Bakersfield proved that. I'm on the behind the back. Doesn't go, though. Johnson's going to get another chance. No whistle. Yeah, they're doing a job on that glass, though. A couple opportunities up on that glass. Johnson just couldn't get that one to go. Carlos, the transfer from the University of Washington. Carter 
That doesn't go. That drop continues. All gray jerseys around that rim. Not one black jersey trying to get on that offensive glass. Lopes would love to see that happen for the remainder of the game. Control the boards. Seattle's drop over three minutes and 20 and counting. Uh, Finky. They got a little Finky down there. A little too much off arm. Trying to clear out some space. And boy, oh boy, these turnovers continue to mount. Now nine GCU turnovers. See that right arm? Just comes out. You can have it bent, but as soon as that elbow starts to straighten out, the official's going to call it every time. You're throwing the player outside a position that's not legal. Coach Hafer animated, making sure the official saw that. Stopping and popping doesn't go. Terrell Brown. But you got to like the way GCU is making a play right now. A lot of one on one play for Seattle University. In this half court situation, they're not their best. GCU can keep getting on that offensive glass and getting field goals. That doesn't go for GCU. They get a little bit chilly after the run they went on to take a 24 17 lead. Yeah, but they're getting back and setting their defense every time. This is a team that likes to score 82 points a game. They, they don't want to play a game where it's, you know, uh, 65-60. Carter's shot doesn't go. Foul behind the play. Looks. Kavas got it, actually. Trying to clear out, I believe, Jared Martin back there. Trey Drexel takes a seat. Eight rebounds here early on in the game for Drexel. Eight early ones here in the first half. Did you yeah. say eight? Wow, that is doing the job on the glass. There it is right there. Look at that 16 to nine GCU advantage on the boards. Mickey pulls down. Back out. Martin, he'll leave it there for Freyer. Freyer, Milstead. Milstead drives, stops, floater. Too heavy. Oh, busting in. And all alone. Oh, we got a new player down there. Looks like the boss is down there grabbing that leg again. Might be his ankle. Yep. It looks like he's holding the knee this time. Yeah, he definitely wow. does. Poor kid. Well, it, unfortunate too because it left nobody there on the glass. And Milstead, who I guess somehow this ball, somehow it finds its way back to Milstead. Let's see. Oh, that's a, oh, he gets it on. The, Tim Finky came in there. I think they hit knees. Finky and them guys hit knees. Well, that, especially if you get it on the outside, the outside or the inside hurt worse than if you get it square in the middle. Believe it or not. Now he's trying to walk it off. Our trainers out there taking a look at it. Looks like he's going to stay in the game. I don't know. Can, can he stay in the game? Thought he had to come out for a play or two. The trainer Jackson. came out. He's going to have to. Miley, yeah. Miley is going to. I don't know if the trainer comes out. Yeah. Yeah. He's got to come out of the game. He's, oh, trying, he's helping these guys the out. The trainer came out on the floor. Really conference action. Going to be a non up to 100% efficiency. Morgan Means. 17 2 run for GCU. Metals back out up top to Ralph Brown. Far side. Grigsby. Brown. Six, five. Oh, he swung. Five, four, three. Travel. Oh, travel. Yeah, he drove his hit shut down. That's a great job defensively. Uh, it started with Matt Jackson. He did a great job on the perimeter, cutting off a drive. The ball had to come back out, but then GCU does a good job keeping it on that left side of the floor. You keep the ball on the same side of the floor, your defense is going to hold more times than not. Milstead. That's the center court. Moves left. Jones on him. Back out. Jackson just inside the arc. Rings out. Rebound. Belongs to Terrell Brown. That was a big bucket right there. That was that one that could have pushed it up to double figures. And two open shots, they couldn't get either one of them to go down. Oh, it almost Man. stands for a steal for Jackson underneath. Here's this one one more time here. He takes it down underneath and passes it back, but the player had moved out of position. He wanted him to be in a spot that they practiced, and he wasn't there. So he threw to a spot, and his player wasn't there. His teammate wasn't there, rather. Means. Tight. D. Means. Tries 
needs to put on some speed. Flair got a hand on it. Now, Dean's got away with a walk, but Flair stayed with it. And still was able to jump up there with those pogo-like legs that he's got and block that shot away. Means one of six with just two points. Labor open for three. Flair. I love the fact that he got on the offensive glass. That's one of those turnovers you don't mind, but I don't understand that three-point shot by Labor. I see he, he's got it wide open. He could take a couple dribbles and got, him, got himself all the way down to the free throw line. You've got a, you know, momentum and a little lead. You're pounding them inside. Don't start firing away from the outside now. 16 foul in GCU with the hole. Very second. Timeout, 3.57 to go, opening half. Lopes up by nine over the Red Hawks with GCU looking to open conference play with their second straight victory. Our armed forces' heroism, courage, and bravery give greater meaning to what it is to be an American. Grand Canyon University honors you and pays tribute to you and your family. As a community, GCU celebrates your service, your sacrifice, and your commitment. God bless all the brave men and women who put our country first. We want to do the same for you. GCU puts you first with its flexible and convenient online degree programs. We salute you and thank you for your service. Welcome back. We are taking a look at the current game, but first let's take a trip outside the WAC to see how it all shakes up. GCU right now with the win on Thursday night over Utah Valley stands in first place in those WAC standings. Bakersfield and Cal Baptist also got the victories, which means there were some big upsets on the road. Seattle University, New Mexico State, Utah Valley each had 12 and 11 wins respectively coming into this game. New Mexico State and Utah Valley both 11 wins in their non-conference schedule. Came in to the WAC conference play, dropped that opener. It was on the road. Now you'll remember that the strength of the preseason schedule for these WAC teams was very strong. An RBI is 16 out of the 32 different conferences in Division I college basketball. And so for the top three teams that we have had our eyes on, who are also the Lopes' top three opponents they opened the season to, very unique that they dropped the games on the road, which, Scott, I would say that means you really got to step up your game and defend that home court because it could be decided on the games you went at home in January could make the decisions in March. Absolutely, kid. you got to take care of the games that you're supposed to win at home. And then these tough ones here, you've got to get more than you lose. Brown. High off the window, and it goes in for Seattle. Brown finally got one to go. He was 0 for 4, struggling, and finally gets his first field goal to drop. Carlos Johnson. High by means, moves right into the paint. High off the glass. Halfway down and spun out, but I like that. After a couple outside shots, I thought were ill-advised. Take the ball back inside. He's on fire. Four for four now for, uh, in this basketball game. Give him a, ten points. Take a shot to the kneecap. Drains the three. Milstead inside the arc, and that's good. No like counter that. after that bucket. Yeah, I like that because you had your nine point lead. He yeah, was, was shrunk down to four, and then Milstead comes back. He likes that little dribble once, dribble twice to that left elbow, and knocking down a jumper. Brown puts it in. Back to back buckets after a drought of about six minutes for Seattle. Four point Lopes lead. Labor cuts in. Swarm back out. Jackson doesn't go. Rebound. Draxel. 
Drexel wants it, doesn't go. Kavas with the rebound. Nine rebounds now for, for Drexel. Eight on the defense, and then that big offensive board, but still some iron unkind around that basket, especially from the three-point range now. Lopes just shooting three from eight from behind the arc. Seattle three of their last three. Oh. Milstead. Yeah. That's gonna send, is that Brown? Brown's gonna go to the free throw line. He's got a fire. He saw that ball go through the basket a couple times. Now he's getting ultra aggressive, put his head down, went to the rack. Well, his first trip to the free throw line, a 68% free throw shooter. Lost the momentum here, uh, and they gotta try to get it back in the final two minutes of this basketball game. And they're up nine, rolling, and all of a sudden now the offense is starting to sputter. And Seattle University's found their stride on offense. Yeah, and they almost caught napping there on that second free throw attempt. Ooh, Lista keeps that in from later. Foul. Nice step on the bounce. Oh, he did. Out of our sight line up here, except for yours, I guess. Well, it's a tough, tough. You know, kind of a under the basket pass. He put a little heat on it and it was outside the, the frame of the court, but he got it. But it was balance was so bad the defender was able to get up on him and underneath him and forced Millsat to step backwards. Well, there was no room to step backwards except on the white line. Are they working the official? Brown. And Seattle University narrows the lead to one and. Uh, The official pushing them. Interesting, I'm not really sure. Hey, there's one more time by Brown here. He just comes off of that screen and he's able to turn the corner on Laver, get all the way to the rack. And Laver was so slow, in, uh, sh slow showing on that screen. He wants the defender to go back towards the midcourt stripe and he wasn't able to get that done, and that was just a ton of, you know, good defense, better offense there with that spinning jumper in the lane. Seven points since four-minute timeout mark. Driving, no step. No bucket. Nice job. And Nettles call. Yeah, nice job by Milstead. Eh? Struggling to get a bucket. Now this will set Milstead the line for the front end of a one-on-one -on -one where he's a 78% free throw shooter. Milstead with eight. Leads all Lopes here in the opening half. Lopes heavy in the rebounding category. And keep an eye on that. Let's see if they can put a couple stops. Together yeah, after losing contact with Seattle on defense to see if they can get a couple stops here in the half. Brown steps back. Now comes towards Jackson. Doesn't go. Drexel with the rebound. What so a job by tonight. Matt Jackson there. Drexel with a double figures and rebounding. Ten of them. Johnson for three. Not a high percentage at 18% from the arc. Not sure Marley wanted that to be the choice. Yeah, I think they wanted to try to get a two for one in that situation. But Carlos Johnson's not the guy you want shooting at three quickly. No way unable to get on that offensive glass. Means looks inside to Carter. Labor's going to be called. Got a no time and score in your foul situation right there. Just play solid defense behind yeah. Carter. There's no reason to get that foul and send him to the line for a chance for free throws. It's just too much hooking underneath there. Carter, 54, oh, make it a 55% free throw shooter. There's a chance he could miss one of these. Because you're the Lopes, I guess you want to miss the first one, isn't that correct? Yes, sir. <laughs> you want it done here. 12 points, eight boards for Miles Carter against Bakersfield, the two-time WAC player of the week. There against Cal. 
There's a time on the floor. One point Lopes lead as 26 seconds remain before the half. Yeah, so. chance for Cook Marley to draw up a final play of the half here. We've seen a number of different things. We've seen the hot try to get the you know sneak Frere along the backside of the baseline for dunks. We tried, you know, the, the alley oop. We've also seen him punch that basketball straight down low. Uh, to labor, let him operate inside out, maybe get a double team and find one of his uh, teammates out there on the perimeter for jump shots. GCU swept the two regular season meetings last year, 73-57 on January 6th, 75-64 on February 22nd. believe these Seattle University players they they realize that they've been coming and getting a beat down by GCU the last few times they playing double figure losses the last couple times down look at they kind of mixing it up here now they showed zone for a second now they've moved back into their man to meet most of waiting 12 11 the way by means five six better find something Aaron pass out of bounds, point nine on the clock. Well, that wasn't the execution Coach Marley called it in the timeout, that's for sure, but got to give Seattle a lot of credit. They disrupted that play, a little poke away to the back. Kurt certainly didn't help him. Catch and shoot. Labor. Good! I think they're going to give him three, although they're going to go check it out. Nice job with Labor, just a straight pop back, catches the ball without hesitation, put a little extra arc on it because he knew Big Carter was coming out to close to try to block that shot. He just wafted that one a little higher, I thought over the top of the scoring uh, score clock. Now it's going to be a two-pointer. Down to Kate. Well, certainly an exciting way to hopefully take the momentum into the locker room at the half. One thing you guys are doing right out there is owning the boards. What stands out to your mind for this first one? Well, we told him we got to rebound the ball. And we're doing a better job. Uh, we got to do a better. I think we're being a little selfish on the offensive end. It's not moving like it has before. Guys are taking it one option. They're not moving side to side, getting cuts and things like that. So we have to do a better job of that. And then we're doing an okay job down here, but they're getting too many easy ones. Let them get a couple threes at the beginning, which we know they can't uh, allow them to do because they're such a good three-point shooting team. We've been talking a lot throughout our broadcast tonight just how important it is to own that home court advantage. I know that's something we preach a lot, but how key is it when this whack is going to be some close play down the stretch to make sure you get these early wins? Well, it's all of it. You know, we, got, we can't lose here. It's unacceptable. It's hard enough to win on the road, so you always got to protect your whole floor, especially in conference. All right, we wish you the best of luck in doing just that tonight, guys. Thank you, Kate. Thanks, head coach Dan Marley. His lopes are on top, 32-29. Kate will be back with more of our halftime festivities from GC Arena in Phoenix, Arizona. So keep it right here. Lopes.com.
there's an exciting destination for food, fun, and golf in the heart of Phoenix. Come to the GCU Hotel and Canyon 49 Grill, where our hospitality management students gain real-world experience and deliver unmatched service. Enjoy beautiful amenities like a resort-style pool, full-service fitness center, championship golf course, and coffee shop GCBC. Canyon 49 Grill serves American fare all day and happy hour with a great vibe and Lopes pride. Room rates start at $89 per night. Visit gcuhotel.com today. Last year's momentum, I think we could be a little bit disappointed with the way we finished last season. So we're trying to use that as more of a uh, motivating memory. You know, obviously it's nice to be preseason ranked again, but we have a whole new squad. You know, we graduated nine guys last year, uh, have seven freshmen. So getting them up to speed through the fall has been great. And I'm really impressed with what they've done. So I'm excited to see where this year goes. Keith is a familiar name. He's one of the best setters to come through this program, and we have three young setters right now. I'm happy to have him come back. He's been doing great things behind the scenes, but more importantly, he's been designating most of his time in the gym to working with our setters, and they're getting some really good training. Demographically speaking, Arizona was really strong last year for boys volleyball. Uh, so Parker Broadway from Arizona, we have a couple older guys, uh, Trevor Weary, David Kishel. Uh, we graduated one guy, Cody Williams, so we like to stay local if we can. Uh, we have two stud outsides from uh, San Diego, Camden Gianni and Christian Janke. Those guys are going to be on the court a lot for us. You know, starting at Libero this year, so another freshman from Arizona, Cole Udall. He's going to be great. You know, we're, we're really happy with where we are. Every year, I think our attendance to matches has increased. I think there's a buzz around campus about, you know, the good character that we have within our program, but also the exciting matches and the teams that we bring into this uh, into this tiny little gym. We love it. We love playing in here. It's exciting. It's definitely a must see. And the team is in action playing some top teams this weekend, top 10 teams this weekend in Santa Barbara. We wish them the best of luck. Meanwhile, in the action tonight here at GCU Arena, it is 32-29, the Lopes over the Red Hot Red Hawks. Now the Red Hawks had a great non-conference schedule coming in here, a great uh, turnout rather. They had 12 wins on the preseason. However, they dropped their whack opener on the road so they're definitely out for vengeance tonight meanwhile at halftime here at gcu arena both the cheer and dance teams are performing their national routines a lot of excitement in the house for the audience here but one thing is missing at this lopes game and that is charles hampton of gcu basketball games he's out here every day providing us with valuable information for each and every game. He is the Associate Athletic Director in charge of Strategic Communications and Public Relations here at GCU. He's invaluable to our broadcast. He provides us so much information. He's out with surgery today. And Charles, we wish you the best of luck on your recovery. It's not the same without you. So please hurry back real soon. Meanwhile, I am Kate Longworth here with your Lopes Halftime Show, and I am joined now by a very special guest, Teresa Killingsworth, and it's almost like we're half-sisters, Longworth Killingsworth. Okay, maybe not, but she does have a very important job as principal with Westwood Elementary School. Thank you so much for being here with us tonight, and I know you brought about 200 people from El the elementary school out to the game. What brings you to GC tonight? GCU has a partnership with the Alhambra Elementary School District. We have, uh, at, we at Westwood Elementary School, we have approximately 90 um, student or interns that are on our campus, in our classrooms, helping our teachers and assisting our students. And so we're really happy to be here tonight to support GCU at this basketball game. It's such an incredible program, so you have GCU students getting that opportunity to go inside the classroom and learn a lot for them if they want to go into the education program themselves. But then also I imagine for those students on your elementary campus, it must be so exciting for them to have college students to come in and invest yeah. in their lives. What changes and what do you see it doing for those young students? 
Well, in fact, we have the we have a learning lounge on our campus, and so we have GCU students that are tutoring our kids in mathematics. And so the kids wear their T-shirts on the days that they go to the learning lounge, and you know they're they're just so proud. It's almost like game day, wearing their uniforms, and the kids are walking around campus, really saying, "I'm GCU." That's great. And where exactly is Westwood Elementary School located? It's actually just down the street at 23rd Avenue in Camelback. How valuable has it been to have GCU part of this community and it only continues to grow? How does it affect the surrounding community and specifically your school? Uh, GCU has grown. I've been in the district for 19 years and so I've obviously have seen tremendous growth with GCU and it's just such an opportunity for us to have GCU in our backyard. Um, there's so much that we can do together um, and to make the community a better place for kids to be. Well, thank you so much, Teresa, for joining us. Best of luck and keeping up this great partnership with GCU. Thank you. All right, and we will be right back with more highlight stats and much, much more. Barry and Scott, they took a quick break, but they are back and they will be with you right after this. Teacher, your calling was always to make a difference and positively impact the future. You live with a deep sense of purpose and strive to inspire generations of change. GCU's online Master's of Education degree program gives you the skills you need to grow and develop your career, while also making sure you have time for yourself and your family. Today, you can learn anywhere and anytime, giving kids a look into the technological advances that pushed you forward. Being strong and compassionate makes you a role model through this formative period in their lives. You're not just inspiring future generations of leaders and innovators to reach for their dreams. You're giving them the tools they need to achieve them. Find your purpose at GCU, where advanced technologies drive education. Private, Christian, affordable, nonprofit. Visit gcu.edu slash online. We have been the experts in clean since 1945. We help businesses keep their facilities cleaner, healthier, greener, and safer. We are passionate about what we do and are committed to making your workplace environment the cleanest and healthiest it can be. Beautiful night in Phoenix. Lopes on top, 32-29. Barry Butel, Scott Williams, Kate Longworth back with you from GCO Arena. A, uh, it was 27 points that uh, Seattle was held to in their loss at Bakersfield. That was a season low. So. A pretty high potent offense in Seattle and they've limited him them in the, the opening half doing a great job on defense the offense not so much but doing a great job on defense and really cracking down on their, their top scores uh, lost them for a hot minute there to end the half but, uh, but overall it was a good first half for GCU let's take a look at our halftime highlights and stats brought to you by dignity health hello human kindness labor from three-point land yeah he got the, the party started out there behind the arc they were one of six shooting with that three going down and then Tavis, he was hot as fish trees he knocks down a three of his own uh, he's got two three-pointers in this first half and milstead was wonderful he's got 10 points i love that floater right there and then jones who you know, he had to go out with the three early fouls. He had a couple mid-range jumpers. And Coach Hayfield, he wants to get on the floor and play a little bit. And he's walking his team down the <laughs> down the floor. They're running a the play, which actually turned out to be a three-point play, so maybe that worked. Now, my big favorite, Clark, comes in off that bench, knocked down a three. Carlos Johnson was good off that bench as well. He gets a three-point in the old-fashioned way. Goes to the line, makes his jump shot in the comments. We talked about him. Ten points, four for four. I don't know if he called Bank on that one, but he'll take it. And then Labor sends us to the half with a buzzer meter. So the Lopes on top, 32-29. The field goal percentages are close. Three-point land, very good for the Red Hawks at four of five. Rebounding margin way in favor of GCU. Bench scoring eight zip. And there you see the turnover margin for both teams. 23-13, the rebounding margin. We talked about, you know, these respective teams. 
when they out rebound their opponents they win we'll see how the uh, Lopes do in the second half because they'll continue to dominate hopefully uh, against the Redhawks to go 2 and 0 well, you get a guy like Drexel going in there getting 10 boards from you from the guard position that is huge and I, I love their tenacity going to the glass they haven't gotten them all the time but they keep going they always uh, kind of coach told me the more you go the more you get all right we're approaching the second half so keep it right here with the Lopes on top 32 29 over Seattle. Getting ready to trade it in. What are you doing? Just a little shopping. Wait, a new truck. Don't you think I should be involved? Of course. We'll head over to Sanderson Ford as soon as I'm done. I don't have time today. Hope we're going with four doors this time. Ooh, of course. I know exactly what I want. I mean, we want. A lightning blue Ford F-150 Super Crew with EcoBoost. All done. Shop from home, buy from home, we deliver. From the dealer you can trust, Sanderson Ford. Performance is your profession. You excel in bringing the best out of people. Through leadership and insight, you help others fulfill their promise. You share a unique bond with your family and cherish your time together. But you strive to take the next step in your career. GCU's online degree program in performance psychology will enhance your skills in helping others succeed. Master your craft in an online PhD program that puts innovation and technology at the heart of education. And you can do it all within a tight schedule without disrupting other aspects of your life. With a PhD in performance psychology, you'll have the tools you need to elevate your performance to the next level. When human excellence meets cutting edge technology, business advances. Find your purpose at GCU, where advanced technologies drive education. Private, Christian, affordable, nonprofit. Visit gcu.edu slash on. New York leading scores from the first half. Streets of New York pizza pasta and subs for over 40 years. Leading the way with 10 points for both teams. We've got Kavas with 10 for Seattle. Milstead with 10 for the Lopes. Johnson and Labor also checking in with five for GCU. And a big night for Drexel already with 10 boards. All right, Kate Longworth back here as we get ready for tip off to the second half. And I'm joined by Jeff Hurd, Commissioner of the WAC. And thank you so much for being here. It's always great to visit with you when you come out for a GCU basketball game. It's always a great to be here because it's a great atmosphere. I, you know, it's just a, this is an incredible place, a great place to watch a game. And I think that, too, the home schedule might play into it with the WAC conference. We've already seen some very competitive play with a non-conference schedule from the teams across the boards in basketball. What's that mean to you to see how the WAC is ranking so high amongst other college basketball conferences? Well, it means a great deal because it shows the progress we're making. We've done so for the last three years, get better each year non-conference-wise. Also makes for a better conference race. And as the conference continues to expand and grow, how have you seen GCU kind of fit in that last year, the first time they're eligible for playoff season, they're part of the WAC tournament? How have you seen the conference grow? Well, no, it's just, no, no. Oh. Okay, oh, it's, the, the growth of this university is unbelievable, as it is for some of the other newer conference members. And, you know, every conference needs a headliner school. And Grand Canyon is you know, rapidly moving into that category. And you reference the environment here. What is it like for you when you walk in here? You get to go to so many of the campuses. We don't have eyes and ears out. You don't have to throw anyone under the bus, but you can pump this place up, right? Well, you know, it's interesting. When I came to the game tonight, you walk outside, you walk in the arena, the band is marching through the middle of the campus, followed by the whole student body, it seems like. And just, it just creates an unbelievable atmosphere, not just in the arena, but outside the excitement it creates. It's uh, far and away the, one of the best environments I've ever been in, in not just in the WAC, but in, in the country. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Commissioner, for checking in with us tonight. We always enjoy talking with you. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you, Kate. Thanks, Commissioner Hurd, as we get underway with second half action. Great comments. WAC is getting stronger inside, foul before the bucket. It'd be nice if they could get that high low action going again. They were able to do that a number of times at home. Things are so good feeding each other. And I'll tell you what, GCU, they got to concentrate coming out of the locker. They had a, a blown assignment on a switch last time down the road, and, uh, down the on the other end. And 
Seattle wasn't able to capitalize, but they got to lock in on defense. Uh, picked off Kavah, Strexel, pass. Looking for Jackson. Means three-pointer. Not there. Jackson. Nice box out. Rebound up high. Drexel. Bop the window and good. Wow, perfect textbook execution of the fast break. Box out. Starts with Jackson. He gets it quickly to his point guard who's got his head up and fires a strike down the floor. Another turnover. In the way was Terrell Brown. I understand why guys always try to take charges 85 feet away from the basket. Look at this block out by Jackson. He gets it to Milstead. Eyes up, quick pass right over the top of the defense. Drexel takes the lid off. Seattle's going to find themselves in a little bit of foul trouble now with Brown and Jones, each with three early second half. Yeah, Jackson did a good job on the boards there. I'm looking for Jackson and Frere to pick up their offensive game. They're just two combined, two for seven in that first half. Step back, too heavy. Kavas with the rebound from Drexel. Means. Behind Drexel into Carter. Carter right hand, heavy. Jackson rebound. Up to Milstead. Nice sweet move on Means. Kicked out Labor. Drexel wide open. Three. Go! Well, that's how you execute your offense. The last couple chips down the floor. You get the fast break bucket. And this one you get down below the free throw line and kick it back out. Twice now they've gotten that ball down low and then thrown it back outside for threes. Drexel picks up the foul on Terrell Brown. Yeah, Brown's doing a good job putting his head down. He discovered something at the end of that first half there, that final six minutes of the half, that he can beat a lot of these Lopes players off the dribble and get to the rack. Brown at the line. One of three now on the night. Seven point GCU lead. GCU looking to improve to 2 0 early on here in conference play. Seattle comes in after a loss on Thursday at Bakersfield. Labor working on Carter, threads the needle short. Loose ball picked up by Kavas. Labor trying to work out on the knife. He's trying to use a number of head and shoulder fakes to get past the defender, but Carter did a nice job there, not biting on Means, Kavas, Kavas slices in. Jackson stuck on him. Excellent wow. defense by Jackson. Kid, I'll tell you what, for a large, taller player, he's been on smaller defenders a few times and up to the challenge. Jackson looked for the three. Oh, look who got a present. Flavor right under the bucket. Yeah, and it's Oscar Freire crashing the glass that kept that one alive. And it, he couldn't handle it, but it squirted right out of his hands and right into the hands of Flavor. All he had to do was just extend his arms and flip it over the rim. Delonte Jones, his three off the rim. Well, Seattle's starting this half much like they started the game. Pretty shaky from the field. They, they started one of five. And they're right now they're 0 for 6 in this half. Thirty-three percent shooting. Freyer wants three. Heavy, big rebound. Yeah, Brown, I tell you what, about the last 10 minutes of action, he has been all over the place. Brown, Jones. Well, I hope he wouldn't foul a three-point shooter. That's a cardinal sin. You got to get out there and challenge these three-point shooters, but you can't foul them. I think they're giving them three shots. They are. Ball in that deep quarter, oh, obviously yeah. hard to defend, and yep, you can see just hits the inside of that uh, shooting arm, trying to challenge that shot. Well, a lot of fire in Coach Marlin. Jones, a 79% free throw shooter coming in. That's his first attempt tonight. 
Seattle. They have no players on the free throw line for these first two free throws. Getting back and setting their defense. I guess you probably might have to look for a little three-quarter or full-quarter press. Well, they send Brown in there now. Jones got into some foul trouble early for Seattle. Ball back to a straight man to man. Okay, all that for not. Milstead takes it from Jackson. Back out. Drexel came out high. Means on him. Leaves for Freyer. Freyer a little labor. Labor far side. Milstead. Back. Freyer looks for some room. Up high. Underneath. Oh, that didn't go. Big rebound. Means pushed out of bounds. It'll belong to GCU. Hayford arguing his case. Time out on the floor, 15.54 to go. Second half, seven-point Lopes lead. They opened up a 32-29 margin at the half. And come out strong here to begin early play, second half action. Coach Wilson pumping them up down there. Coach Marley drawing up the plays. Let's send it down courtside, get on with Well, guys, we know defense wins championships. We also know that is the mantra that Dan Marley not only played his game, but also coaches his game. He wants his team to step up on defense, and let's just say message received by his players. That's half the game, playing defense. So, uh, you know, we were a really good defensive team last year. Um, and, you know, we kind of felt that, like, to get back to the level we were last year. We just need to pick it up, uh, increase the energy, increase the effort. Um, and that's about it, just stay locked into what we're trying to do on the defensive end. We're 7-0 when we play real good defense and we're 0-6 when we are terrible on defense. So that tells you right there what we need to do. And basically just get into our identity. We are a bigger team, so we should be able to get down and guard and you know just be more physical than these other teams. Our game against Texas a few games ago, obviously we didn't play well at all and we were terrible on the defensive end and every little mistake we had they made us pay for it by making shots and it was really an eye-opener for us to see what we really need to improve on and uh, we're really uh, taking steps in practice to uh, really get better taking every drill really serious because we want that to carry over into the game segments so uh, really just trying to get in our positions rebound uh, hitting people and going up and getting the boards and uh, just making little plays you have people getting on the floor uh, taking charges when they're there and uh, that's, that's what you have to do to grind out wins. And now with just under 60 to play in the second half so far, GCU holding the Red Hawks to 32 points. And on average, their opponents have been scoring at just around 60 points per game. The team really strong behind the arc with their guarding. They have allowed opponents to only a 29% shooting range from the three-point range. And big, very impressive was still 16 there, and they have caused 28 turnovers. And six allowed by a team. 16 total in the last two games, but only three assists for Utah Valley in that last game. And those little stats, guys, not as flashy as they can be on offense when you see a big finish. However, these little stats are not sure you tell us they can win a game. Plays like that also can win games. Labor with a sweet return feed to Drexel. Off the window. Yeah, no second chance points, no fast break points, no bench points. 11 points, 11 rebounds for Drexel. Stopping, popping short there for Delonte Jones. Drexel leaves for Freyer, takes it back. Feeds Jackson off the glass. That's a nice play right there. Drexel's doing a good job moving that basketball around. Damari Milstead moving around, Oscar uh, Frere. Everybody's doing a nice job moving that ball around. They're helping one another score. And you look at the other side, Seattle University, seems to be a lot more one-on-one -on -one play. I love this one right here, a little pick, roll to the basket. Nobody comes over from the weak side to help, and Matt Jackson puts it in R for reverse. Coach Hayford calls timeout, 15.07 to go, second half. Lopes on an 11-3 run this half. I like the fact that they've gone back inside for a couple buckets. I mean, they had a 14 to 6 uh, points in the paint advantage early in this basketball game. They kind of got away from that. That slipped down to about a six point advantage. They come back out of that last timeout and they go back inside for a couple buckets to push that advantage back up to 10. 
take a peek at the AP top 25 Duke on top Michigan Tennessee Virginia Kansas Nevada Gonzaga Michigan State Florida State and Virginia Tech rounds out the top 10 your Tar Heels at 15. Yeah we're out of the top 10 we got a big win today against Pittsburgh beat Pittsburgh by 25 so that's good maybe that'll move them up a tick or two in that those rankings but seeing Duke on top and Carolina on the top 10 it's that's a tough feeling. So GCU in this game a plus 10 in the paint plus 12 rebounding margin as you look at the rest of the top 25 rounding it out with Iowa. Coach Hayford circling his team around 32 and 17 at Seattle for the second year head coach Jim Hayford. His associate head coach is Chris Vic Victor. The assistant coaches are Sam Kirby and Nick Robinson. 12 and 3 mark in non conference play. Knocked off what, a couple of Pac 12 teams. They knocked off Cal. Knocked off Cal and Washington State. State. Yeah, and they, they gave Washington a bit of a game. They, they couldn't, couldn't close the deal there, but. You know, they're, they're playing some good basketball. Coach Hayfield's got, uh, Hayford's got his team playing really well. Uh, and they got the offense revved up. I mean, 81.5 points per basketball game. That is a lot. They have a few clunkers every now and again, but you know, if, you, if you put the ball in the basket you know, 75 to 80 or 80 points a night, you're going to be tough to beat. Main step back on Drexel. Drexel line him, hands it off. Jones. Feeds it back to Terrell Brown. Brown on the by Damari Milstead. Brown shoots. Nice bucket there. He's got good body control. I mean, that's one thing he's shown with ability off the bounce there. Good body control, good handle with the dribble. When he gets into a shot, he gets those shoulders squared right back to the basket. Michael Finke wants three. Give it to him! How about it? Finke busted it in from long range. Look for three and nine prior to that one from behind the arc. So. Finky knocking down a, another shot from behind the arc. Lopes doing a good job mixing in the twos and the threes. A scrum. The Russian arrow belongs to GCU. Drexel yeah, in contention, think, no doubt. I think for they're going to say Drexel got that ball and called Clean? timeout. Oh. I think that's what the official awarded. So let's look at this. Watch well, Finky right there. No hesitation. Carter didn't want to go out there and challenge the big hit. <laughs> Fifth year senior said, okay, thank you very much. I'll take those threes. But I'm pretty sure on that last one, I think the official might say that the GCU player grabbed the ball and somebody, if, if not Drexel, called the timeout. They're going to give that ball over to the Lopes. For the tie up. So the possession area is not going to flip back the other way. Lopes keep this basketball yeah. and if there's a next jump ball situation the Lopes will get it back again. H heady play. Was it Freya? That's one one more time and everyone's down on the floor there. Drexel caught grabbing the ball. Oh, Freya signals the timeout before the Seattle player could come in and call the you know cause the tie up. Yeah so you know you, you listen you, you want that basketball clean. They would have got it with the possession arrow but it's nice to be able to have the possession arrow still in your favor. It's not heady basketball play. Michael Finke, same spot. Keeps it down low. Working on Carter. Goes off of Terrell Brown. Lopes ball with 15 on the shot clock. Twelve point Lopes lead. Jackson. Michael Finke. Foul there by Terrell Brown. How about Fink? He knocks a three down. Now he's getting aggressive. He drove the right baseline a moment ago. Didn't get anything down that way. He catches this one out on the, the left wing, and he takes off like a bullet again down that left side, gets tripped up. That's what you need, guys coming off that bench. Hungry, provide some energy. Michael Finky eyed by Carter. Goes up over the top. Drexel. Off the glass. Straight Drexel. He's having himself yeah. a whale of a ball game. He wanted that basketball down there. Finky took his time making sure that Drexel had sealed his guy before he threw it into him. 
Kavas. Oh, he's nasty from the yard. This kid doesn't miss from outside. <laughs> Tell you what, I, I like his game. I know he's slowed somewhat with that with that leg injury and got it banged again that first half, but when he squares his shoulders. It looks it looks good as soon as it leaves his fingertips. Milstead stops. Goes in. How many times am I going to say Milstead likes to go right to left for a couple dribbles and a pull up and. Seattle University better figure it out. They're going to get burned all night on that one. It looks like, is that Brown? Brown is hobbled out there. He can't straighten his leg. Might be cramping up. Look at that seal down there by Drexel. He pushed the guy all the way out to the three-point line. Then he takes on Kavas at the rim. Wow, oh, Brown staying in this game. He looks like he could barely stand. He's kind of pulling his leg behind him. They don't have a very deep bench, does Coach Hayford. Means looking to move on Jackson. Jackson's on. Oh, look at him slip through, but it doesn't go. Nice break there for Matt Jackson. Great D by Jackson. Then he got a little too aggressive and tried to deny the outlet pass, yeah. and he went back to the basket, but he couldn't finish the play. Another foul out here. That could be on Means. Yeah, Means has not been able to get going tonight. Carter hasn't been able to get going tonight. Just one of nine from the field. Means just a, a measly one for is that one for six from the floor as well. So the defense is doing a good job. Make that means one for one of eight from the field. They're doing a good job and they're starting to pull away now up 13. Drexel. Back out. Jackson quickly to Milstead. Pulls it back down. Oh, oh yeah. Move those feet. Jackson shot Jackson's really got to take right there. He got to get himself in position as he sees Drexel driving the opposite direction. Go ahead and take up that space to that three-point line and get yourself ready to shoot. I like the swing swing. Don't get me wrong. But Milstead's not the, 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 the shooter that you want shooting that basketball. If you're going to fire a three, go ahead and take that three yourself. Milstead's got that good, great mid-range game. Brown floats it up, brings out. Carter got a hand on it, not enough. No step. Look out, no step. Brown on him. Carlos Johnson cuts in. Oh, it doesn't go. Drexel's there. Drexel's everywhere. He is, isn't he? <laughs> that little kid knows how to play. I told you, he's got all those people back in Washington watching him. He's trying to show out. 13 points, 13 rebounds. Give him another half rebound for that one. Ropes on top, 50 to 37, looking to improve to 2 0 in conference play here in Phoenix on their home court. We'll see. So keep it right here. You use the latest technology to treat patients, but your care and compassion is timeless. And as an RN, you delight in sharing it. But there's always room to grow. Advancing your career means helping more patients and providing even more care. Grand Canyon University's online programs in nursing make it convenient for you to become the expert every patient deserves. Healthcare has made significant advancements and GCU teaches you how to prepare for the future. By applying that knowledge, you're able to stay up to date with the latest medical technologies. And since GCU's nursing programs are online, you can access your program from anywhere, so you're always there for those most important. Find your purpose at GCU, where advanced technologies drive education. Private, Christian, affordable, nonprofit. Visit gcu.edu slash online. Tonight's GCU men's basketball game is brought to you in part by Dignity Health. Hello, human kindness. And by Sanderson Ford. The best play on a new Ford is at Sanderson Ford. It's always a who's who of celebrities here at GCU basketball. Love it. And Myers Drysdale down there checking out the action. UCLA legend, Hall of Famer, and all around great person. <laughs> Tim Kempton was here on Thursday, wasn't he? Yeah, getting all the Suns broadcasters out here, hanging out with Thunder Dan. Suns group was out here on Thursday as well. And 
There's a gentleman who knows all about the Phoenix Suns, Mr. Clangelo. That's right. Godfather of Phoenix Sports. Brought the Suns to the Valley. Brought the Diamondbacks to the Valley. Where else would you want to be than right here, right now, in the words of Marv Levy? This is the hottest venue in all of Phoenix to watch basketball. I've watched any sport you've been for that matter. Well, Michael Finky getting a little hungry over there from the arc. That one doesn't go. Yeah, kind of a heat check there for sure. And now he got to knuckle down here and, and get a stop on defense. Brown takes it. The means trying to move on Tim Finky. Brown high, doesn't go. Rebound Michael Finky. They are owning the boards yeah. tonight. It's one and done for the Red Hawks. 35-19 advantage, rebounding margin for GCU. Finky again in the corner. Let's go back to Martin. Martin Finky leaves it there for Drexel. Drexel back to Tim Finky. Takes it low. Kick back out. Drexel. Martin. Baseline drive. Back out. Michael Finky from the arc. And it is good. That's some good team basketball yeah. right there. Four different lobes touching the ball in that possession. Swinging it from side to side. Finally get the man from behind the arc that they want as Finky delivers his second three of the half. Too much underneath Carter. Pushing off Finky. Doing a nice job defensively down there as well. Offensive foul call on the Red Hawks, number one, Miles Carter. Third person. Carter picks up his third. Great ball movement right there. Doesn't stick. That's one thing Coach Marley was talking about going into the break, that he wanted to do a better ball movement out there. Guys were hunting their own shots, but not on that possession. You got everything in a bag of chips right there, and think he delivered the three. Drexel. Beans. Right up tight. Bounce pass. Tim Finky near side. Big pick brother helping him out. Yeah, pick and pop for Finky again. Hot hand. Oh, he doesn't go. But Drexel's right there. Is this kid playing the game? Where did he even come from? Giving 15 points, 14 boards. Career highs tonight. Woodenville, you seeing that up there in Washington? Oh, Michael Finky. He loves it. He took, he took an elbow and a shoulder to the chest and chin, and he loved the contact, playing the deep. Listen, Seattle University is real close to getting blown out the uh, water right now. Down 18 points, and he got nothing going. Look at that one by Drexel. And Finky down the other end, sliding his feet there, takes a contact. Look at him pumping his fist. Got all of his teammates down there helping him up. Finch is getting it done tonight. Carter quickly, quickly picked up his third and his fourth personal foul. Smile on Drexel's face over there. Coach Marley, he ain't got nothing to draw up. He said, just keep doing what you're doing. Send it down to Kate. All right, guys, we'll take a quick trip around the whack. Don't worry, you don't have to leave your couch. We'll do the work here. Chicago State falling victim at Kansas City, 80-72, a final there. Meanwhile, a couple 8 p.m. tip-offs tonight. California Baptist has UTRGV. Meanwhile, Utah Valley still looking for that first victory. They are at Bakersfield tonight. And on the women's side, a big congratulations to Cal, Cal and her folks as they came up with their first WAC win tonight at Seattle. 56-53, the final in overtime. And no, you don't need to squint. You're not reading that score wrong. That is correct. Kansas City with the 111-58 victory Ouch. over Chicago State. And we mentioned Nicole Powell. They started the season on the road, but they will be back against New Mexico State Thursday, January 10th, 6 p.m. tip-off. Yeah, I think that game today went to three overtimes. Carlos Johnson, step back. Ooh. Got him on the elbow. He did, didn't he? Yes, he did. Got caught trying to block that shot and picked up another foul. I tell you, Ed Jones has been in foul trouble tonight. What yes, is that, four now for Jones? Yep. One more. Hasta la vista, baby. We still got nine minutes and 54 seconds to go in this one. Yeah, Carter's on the floor with four. Jones has four. Brown has three. Can't say enough about the job defensively the Lopes have done. This is a team, 81 and a half points a game, and you got under 10 minutes to play in the second half. They're at 37 points. Stunt looking for answers. Looks like they cut it out to Kabas. Second. Defense, 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 defense. My 
Coach Frank Eaton. Oh, now they got Carlos Johnson. It's going to be the call for, for the jour the rest of the game. Carlos Johnson clearing out space on the post up underneath. 9.24 to go. And 9.24 to go, and the Lopes are already in the penalty on the bonus situation, shooting the one-on-ones. They only have three team fouls. We talked about that. They foul the least out of any team in the Western Athletic Conference, and that can be huge in this close ball game, especially on the road. Ground shot off the mark. Look, wanted a whistle. Carlos Johnson went high. Yeah, he reminded me of Rodman, the way Rodman used to spread his legs all, flare him out to the side. Another shot from long range that... When's Carlos Johnson going to get the memo? He's not uh, a three-point shooter. Right, how many shots he's got to miss from the perimeter? You realize you can't shoot it from the outside. On the other side of that, though, is how many times do you beat guys off the dribble drive and get buckets in the middle for or and one situations or get you get yourself fouled and you go to the free throw line? You know, for an older player in this league and a guy coming from a Power Five conference, you think you'd have figured that one out by now. 18% coming in, 6 of 36 now, as he is 0 for 2. Put on the afterburners. Oh. Nice work there. What a move by Carter. Twisting from his right back to his left, threw that one over his left hand hook off the glass. That was a thing of beauty. Put that on a highlight reel. Good think he leaves it for Carlos Johnson. Michael Finky comes out. Tim Finky back to his older brother. Top to Martin. Martin moves in. Twist turns high off the glass. Doesn't go. Cabas is fouled underneath. Looks like Martin's going to be called. Well, Martin getting some minutes here. 8.08 on the clock. A 17 point lead. This one looks like it's going to be pretty good. But I remember this Seattle University team. They came from double digits down in a game and nipped the uh, Lopes at the wire here on this floor. So you're never out of it. Oh, Johnson. Shield, Johnson. Up, off the glass. He is fouled. Timeout. 7.52 on the clock. Lopes on top, 56-39. Trey Drexel in the game. 15 points, 14 rebounds. Has a couple of assists as well. He's been all over the place. Well, I just love his energy tonight. I mean, he hasn't forced a thing. Where he's gone to the defensive boards and grabbed a bunch of defense for the team that is not even fast breaks. He's run the floor in transition for easy buckets. He's knocked down the mid-range shot and the bucket. The shot's going to the glass, getting offensive rebounds for buckets. He's been super effective with his minutes on his floor. I got to take a look at his plus minus because he's got to be killing that statistic as well. Uh, and, uh, everything that he does uh, is just smart, intelligent basketball. Has not forced to play out there tonight, taking care of the basketball. Good for this guy showing up. With Bill Washington native, transfer. Coming into the game. Western Washington. And one of our keys tonight, Barry, was how is that bench going to perform tonight? They've had some really good games. They've had some stinkers. To, uh, and tonight is one of those really good ones. They are outperforming the Seattle bench 15 points to zero. Yeah. Western Athletic Conference basketball tournament tickets on sale now. Come support both the men's and the women's teams. They try for their first NCAA tournament bids. Tournament again, March 13th through the 16th, Orleans Arena, Las Vegas, Nevada. Get your tickets right now. You might want to consider making those plans, securing your hotel rooms. There's a few conference tournaments out there. At that same time, it's College Basketball Central. The West Coast Conference Tournament right before the Western Athletic Conference Tournament. The Pac-12 tournaments out there at the T-Mobile Arena. You love college basketball. That is, that's the place to be. 
Hope to see you at the Orleans. There's probably a few other things you can do in Vegas, but I mean, it's all about college basketball from what I understand. You might even see Scott Williams there. Yeah, come down, meet me. Come say hello. Yeah. Let's talk some hoops. Talk about the GCU. Talk about the WAC. We talk about major college basketball. And teams at ACC, Duke, North Carolina. Odds I'll be the out there. Maybe my birthday. Maybe buy me a birthday drink. There you go. Yeah. Absolutely. Got some buddies coming out from North Carolina for that first round of the tournament as well. So I might be there two weekends in a row. Well, that might be fun. Watson connects. I like that, Carlos Johnson. See, that's what I'm talking about, yeah. though. If put your head down and go to the basket, young man. That's where the gold's at. <laughs> that fool's goal out there behind the arc. He's got the, uh, he's got the speed. He definitely got the speed. Look, Look at that. his feet on defense right there and stop this guy. Nobody can stay with him. He's got the speed, he's got the power, and he's got the explosion. He's picked off that board. Did he get whistled for one there? No, no. I think he played Mike pretty to, good. Went to Finky. Okay, well now Seattle's going to find themselves in the bonus the rest of this half. Not sure what happened there. Five seconds. Carter. Nope. Carter got called. Carter's going to have to take a seat. He's he's DQ'd. Oh my, that really hurts. Man, not that he was scoring the ball great, but he's a big presence in and around that basket. Lisa, just two of ten from the field, six points, a couple free throws, but he had four boards, and he's an intimidating factor around that bucket, so they get they get smaller instantly. Well step. Martin goes off of Laver's hand and into the Red Hawks. Means. Tim Finky got a hand on it. Official says it went off of Tim. Inbound coming in by Aaron Nettles. Yeah, they've done the job on Means tonight. And this guy was second uh, leading scorer in the Western Athletic Conference coming into this game, and he's just one of nine for the field for two measly points. The boss. Jones. Over's going to be called. Pretty easy call for the officials right there. And it's nice, heady basketball play. Getting himself to the free throw line. You got to get the big guy going one direction. And you jump back into him after he's late in recovery and you go to the free throw line. The team is struggling. You got to wait, find ways to manufacture points. You're not hitting from the outside, you're not getting anything in the mid range around the basket. How about getting to the charity strike? Uh -oh. Sometimes it's just not your night. Connects on the back end. An 18 point lead. And they concentrate here the next three minutes, two, three minutes, three and a half minutes. This game is over. They lose their focus and let this thing slip back down to nine. You start giving Seattle University some light. Oh, and another turnover. Drexel back on the court. All, all Seattle University wants to do is try to get this thing under nine with, you know, four, four and a half minutes to go. And they got the basketball right now. And we're only, only nine points away from being able to do that. Laver and Johnson with three and Kavasic from long distance. Yeah, he gave him two on that. I think he said his oh. foot was on the line, so give him a two-pointer. Did you see him? They can't lose their focus with this oh. large lead. Inside the Laver, working on Kavas. Tipped away by Kavas, but into the hands of Martin. Laver's got to be tighter with that ball. He lost it the last time. Laver. Good. Three-pointer. Uh, Laver with a couple of threes tonight as well. Nice job getting that ball below. He actually did kind of a reverse. He drive it instead of the big man staying down low. He pops out to the three-point line. Means Martin got a little on it, and then he got the rebound. Nice job by Martin. He took a shot down into the midsection. It looked like he got one 
in the man area, but he just does a nice job staying with the play and forced the guy into a tough shot, and then he's able to corral the board. It's a delicate area. Flavor. Johnson back door off on the window. Down low. It's an easy game. Yeah. I, I, it's an easy game, Carlos. I love the way you play, my friend. Just keep banging them inside. No reason to shoot outside. Means. Jones, twists on Grunsel, floater in good. Timeout Redhawks, 5.25 to go. 63-44, the largest lead for GCU in this game number two of conference play on their home court, where they have been a perfect 6-0 this season. Yeah, doing a job. I mean, Odin the glass, 39-23 advantage on the glass. The second half has just been a mismatch after a competitive first half. Lopes have just blown their doors off here in the second. Head coach Nicole Powell and the GCU women's basketball team coming off a big win today. They're out to conquer the conference this season. They're on the road, of course, this weekend to start conference play. Then they take on arch rivals New Mexico State at home on Thursday, January 10th at 6 p.m. Great seats are available for the game. Come out to the GCU arena. Cheer on the Lopes here next Thursday and Saturday. Nicole Powell and GCU women's basketball. Students returning to campus, many of them making their way in, as well as families who enjoy coming out for GCU basketball. There are some of the students, no doubt. Classes resume on Monday. Great opportunity for alumni and fans to come out during this time when the students are out. GCU's bench has been dominating, as you mentioned earlier, that their 15 to 0 margin has now been opened up to 19 to nothing. Yeah, Finky and Carlos Johnson have uh, made a couple buckets since we last updated that. They're gonna burn a little clock here. They're going to their horns high set. Martin, Labor comes in, back out. Martin beyond the arc, near side, bounce pass into Labor. Labor. Goes right hand short, kicked back out. Martin's going to be able to pick it up. A burn little clock. Yeah, bring yeah. it back outside, reset another play, and burn 20, 25 seconds off of that game clock. Harley getting the stop sign on there. He's real stead, take his time. Now he moves. Back out, Labor goes down the three. Now he steps up. Good! Alessandro Labor. That's the thing of beauty right there. You know he's knocked a couple threes down. He's just got to show him that basketball like you're going to shoot another three. And you take one dribble to pull up the free throw line. Floater by Terrell Brown. Good for Seattle. Hey, right, Brown, he's been, you know, he's not the lead. I guess he is now their leading scorer on the floor with 12 points. But he's been their best player. He's been their most aggressive player tonight. Now Kavas is probably, you know, a little spanged up with a, that, uh, that leg. Matter of fact, he's got actually, Kavas has got 15. But every time down now, and you see GCU milking that game clock. Mm -hmm. Nolstead finds Martin. Martin goes right. Drexel, he'll like a little three. That's short. Pulled down by Terrell Brown. It's been the Terrell Brown had his hand on the basketball for quite a while for Seattle. Carlos Johnson, I tell you what, he got the worst end of that deal. He got Didn't his he? head taken off on a blindside pick, and he's going to be the one whistle for the foul. It's fourth. 346 to go. Lopes in control. 65 46 over the Red Hawks from Seattle. It's not about where you were born. It's not about your gender. Or the color of your skin. Or whether you're rich, poor, or in the middle. No matter what you play, if you have the skill and drive to succeed in school and in sports, we'll provide the opportunity.
when my hot water heater failed. She was pregnant. In-laws were coming. A little bit of water, it really, it rocked our world. I had no idea the amount of damage that water could do. We called USAA, and they, they greeted me as they always do. Sergeant Baker, how are you? They were on it. It was unbelievable. Having insurance is something everyone needs, but having USAA, that's a privilege. We're the Bakers, and we're USAA members for life. USAA. Get your insurance quote today. Just under four to play here at the GCU Arena, but the crowd's still in this as the Wolves have a 19-point lead over Seattle University. And if the Wolves hang on to this lead, they'll open the whack play with a 2-0 record and take that great record to New Mexico State, their conference rival. The next game for men's basketball is Thursday, January 10th with a 7 p.m. tip-off. Now, this will be a Lopes on the Road event, so three buses from GCU campus will be heading to La Cruces. The Havocs will be in the house um, at the Aggies home court. However, if you cannot make the trip, we want to remind you, you can tune in to Fox Sports Plus. Arizona Plus is on Fox. It's channel 1073. You can also find it on some of the other network dish um, at 448. And then we want to remind you, you can tune in always also to the radio and hear the broadcast. So the Lopes hoping to take a 2-0 record and get that win over the Aggies. Yeah, Mike the Potter of all the action on 1580 The Fanatic. 9.23 FM. Hopes insider Paul Coral will have the complete preview and game summary on GCULopes.com. Follow the Lopes all season long. Paul Coral. Milstead brings it up. to 25 this half from the field. Labor turns, now backs in, kicks out, takes it back from Milstead, hooping it on. That's old school basketball that right was, there, Barry. You get the ball down low, you throw it back out, and when the defense is trying to come, look at him, take up that space there, and now he gets the ball where he's out of the painted area, now he gets the ball two feet into the painted area, easy bucket and a mark. This game is over. Textbook, Riley Grigsby. Called for that foul. Yeah, Lopes took care of business in this second half. And doing the job on the D. And then offensively have really picked their game up as far as efficiency goes. Economo in the game. Off the mark from three-point land. Martin's going to be called. That would be a complete GC basketball game. Martin has ended up on his backside once on the floor. I mean, this guy, he just plays hard. He's always trying to get in there and draw a charge or get a board, whatever he's got to do amongst the trees. And he's not afraid to give up his body. I don't know how many bags of ice he needs after a basketball game. Between his elbows, knees, thighs, hips, back. Seattle came in here high-flying offensive firepower. They have 50 points. Their season low is 62 against Washington. Now, they may not get to 62 tonight, I don't think, but one thing I'll say, the Lopes had a lot to do with that. They made them play a lot of one-on-one -on -one basketball tonight. They never got their fast break transition game going, and the half-court sets were just weak sauce. They never got into anything that gave them good looks at trying to score by helping one another. Backcourt violation. Man, they, look at Finky. That was, that's the young Finky down there on that bench. And that bench did the job tonight between Fink, the Finkies, uh, Carlos Johnson. They all, they all came in and played really well. Even, even Mark knocking down the three early gave the, I think that bench core a lot of confidence. But also by Economo, about the rebound. Foul is called as Delonte Jones was taking it to the bucket. Yeah, he drove it right at Drexel. Drexel can't believe it. He's like, listen, I was just backing up, backing up. The guy crushed into me. Drexel's going to realize at some point in time, you can back up so far, but once you're underneath the rim, it's too late. You gotta slide your feet. Now you gotta start making your stand right here. You get down in that area, you're looking up to the rim. 
Tim Vicky comes in for Drexel. Delonte Jones. Good. I wish somebody would fix that net. It's bugging me that that Is one that piece that of big net there? got yep. that big loop sticking out yeah. there. Are you like obsessive compulsive? Or? I don't know. Maybe I am. But can't somebody see that? Can't somebody go tug on that and pull it down? It's driving me nuts. You just, I mean, it doesn't really I can't have any stop looking at game. it. Well, the play's on the other end of the. Of but the I know court. I still can't stop looking at it. It's more of a Scott problem. <laughs> it really is my problem. I got <laughs> issues. Johnson, Tim Finke. Oh, here we go. Now we're going back to that Aaron hoop. Jones takes it. Maybe it'll help. No, didn't, didn't work. See, it's still got that little. Let me get a shot of that for those that don't know what the heck we're talking about. I'm losing it. Okay, well, they're up by 14 points, so it really there. doesn't there matter. Right? This, this game should. That's what you start talking about when you have a 68 54 margin. Yeah, but. Lopes, I think they've really gone into their stall tactic here. They were just, you know, they could have pushed this thing from 20 maybe to 25 points, but they like, you know, let's just take the win. They stopped fouling and sit up to the free throw line, get that clock ticking. This game would have been over by now. Some of these fouls here down the stretch, now they're in the double bonus. We'll get to shoot two free throws every time down the stretch. And is that Labor's fifth? He's coming out. He's coming out. Maybe not his fifth. They just want to get Jackson back inside there because they don't really have a player for Labor to match up with on the defense. And a little uh, player moving, ball moving on the offense. They had more to do with Marley just being upset with him for reaching in like that and slowing this game down. Yeah, you got a good point. And that's a good teaching point for the sophomore. You know, bring him on over and say, well, listen, you've done a good job tonight. Now we're trying to salt this game away, son. We want this clock to tick. Don't foul him 75 feet away from the basket and get him two, two free throw opportunities. He made, the, made one, made the second one. Under a minute and a half to go. Lopes are going to improve to 2-0 in a tough Western Athletic Conference. It is really tough. I mean, talking about all the conferences in the country, which there's 32 of them. Oh, looky. Back door. Johnson. Easy bucket. Nice job by Milstead finding the wide open guy on the weak side. But 32 conferences in the Western Athletic Conference ranked 16. That's a long way from where they used to be. Picked up by Johnson. Under a minute to go. Milking seconds off the clock. Foul is committed by Terrell Brown. Fourth on Brown. Yeah, and, and Carlos Johnson, I mean, he got that last bucket there underneath. He's been the, the player that Marley tabs, I think, for going to get points off of his bench. He's got 12 points tonight off the punt. Got himself 15 rebounds, and he's won another good job uh, switching on defensive assignments and keeping that ball on one side of the floor where Lopes has been able to shut down this red hot, red hot offense. Rafe Curtis in for Mark. GCU. Conamo, big rebound underneath. Here's Paul Martin. Goes out. Red Hawks retain possession. There's Curtis. He's Summit, Missouri native. That should just about do it. I don't think Seattle will foul in this situation. So put this one uh, in the win column. GC will be happy to have defended their home court here to open the whack play. His first two basketball games. Now they got to go back down the road and try to get one against the Aggies. 8.1 on the clock. Yeah, season low, 57 points. We'll see how they close things out here. Jones stopping. Doesn't go. And that's it. Looks win it. 71 57 to improve to 2 and 0 on the season. And once again, when they out rebound their opponent, they are victorious. Now, a perfect 9 and 0. And the Lopes improved to 9 and 6 overall. And as I mentioned, 2 and 0, that big number in the conference as they get the job done here on their home court.
Well, whack play, that's all that matters to this GCU basketball team. They forget about that regular season. Their one and only goal was to win the Western Athletic Conference, get the top seed going into the WAC tournament, getting that tournament victory, and getting to the big dance. Coach Marley's going to be real happy with the way his team picked it up in the second half. Shut down a high fly at Seattle team, back to back against Utah Valley and Seattle. We'll take a timeout here, be back with head coach Dan Marley's post game press conference. Our final stats and much more, so leave it right here. Curiosity fuels you. It helps you understand the world around you. It's your guide through life. So when you're ready for a fulfilling new career, let your curiosity fuel that change. Change is difficult. But Grand Canyon University's online degree programs in technology make it convenient for you to achieve your dream. While businesses are being transformed by artificial intelligence and analytics, GCU teaches you how to plan for innovation and make sense of the world. By applying that knowledge to today's most challenging problems and sharing your insights, you're helping to build a better tomorrow for you, your community, and your family. Find your purpose at GCU, where advanced technologies drive education. Private, Christian, affordable, nonprofit. Visit gcu.edu slash online. Yeah! Do you want to be on Ask GCU? Twitter raffle. Twitter raffle. Tweet us your questions, and the person with the best question is going to get featured on the next episode with the crew. My dudes. What are you doing? <laughs> People don't like us very much, it seems. <laughs> Tweet hashtag AskGCU to get your question featured. Barry Butel, Scott Williams back at GCU Arena as the Lopes are victorious 71 to 57 over Seattle and improved to 2 and 0 on the season decisive second half that opened up a 32 29 margin in at the half and the Lopes come out firing on all cylinders boy oh boy they needed this victory they need to dominate here on home court and they showed it in the second half they went sure. out there and just snatched that yeah. victory in the second half I mean, they were the more aggressive team on both sides of the floor and, and really happy for these guys you know they, they had a tough one when they went down to San Diego they lost coach Marley has been cracking that whip and getting after these guys and the hard work has paid off our Canyon State Credit Union player of the game, Canyon State Credit Union committed to you. Trey Drexel, 15 points, 14 rebounds. He was an animal out there tonight. I mean, so aggressive on uh, both sides of the basket, but certainly the offensive end and the defensive glass is where he absolutely thrived. The mid-range games was working. He had his eyes up. He was dropping passes over the top of the defense, taking the lid off of the three-point shot. Congratulations to this young man. I don't know if they're calling it a, a career high 14 rebounds. I'm going to talk with the. Uh, uh, yeah, 17 with the against Concordia. Yeah, I don't know. Is that that's D, Western D2. Washington D2? I'm going to say this is D1. I'll yeah. say this is big boy basketball big boy here. Basketball. These 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 is where it counts. So career high. Let's talk just about, go with that. Okay, we'll go with that. Big boy uh, basketball too, uh, shutting down a pretty high potent offense in in Seattle here tonight. Yeah, I and mean, the defense was wonderful. Give uh, Milstead a ton of credit going out there, shutting down Means, just locking him up. He drew that assignment. You know, Oscar Frere. Jackson did a great job. They all get on different guys because Coach Marley likes to switch any type of dribble handoff or pick and roll situation. So they were locked in defensively and just shut down a team that was scoring 81 points a game. Well, they ended up with 57 tonight. So wonderful job uh, defensively. All right, let's send it downstairs. Kate Longworth is with Lopes Insider Paul Coral. All right, thank you guys. And uh, coming into this game, so much was made about this opening series for the WAC. Gets two strong opponents, and now the Lopes find themselves 2-0. How key is that for this program? Yeah, unbelievable start. The way they played defense these two games and then established their offense in the second half tonight really says uh, droves about the way they're playing going into the New Mexico State game. Now they've established themselves against some of the top teams. I think they have an identity now as a, a strong defensive team. They've done it consistently over the past five games. 
But what they did in these first two games to really earmark the key players on the other team and take them out was really impressive. Yeah, and so many bright points to talk about this game. But what stands out the most to you, whether it's the out-rebounding where we see that tends to lead to victories for the Lobes or the efficiency on offense? I mean, they seem to kind of put it together, a complete game tonight. But what yeah. stands out to you? Long list of happy things, yeah, huh? Yeah, right? Um, the, Trey Drexel's rebounding was unbelievable. You know, you look at – he had a – career high of 17 you're thinking oh there's no way he's gonna come mm -hmm. close to that he had 10 in the first half that was a right. season high and but then the scoring too he was a big part of the reason the offense clicked in the start of the second half I think they outscored him 27 to 6 to start and really blew the game open the defense is what got him ahead and that's really a carryover from uh, the past few games ever since that Texas game which is really the the big regret of the season they've been consistently good on defense and a lot of that is taking away the three-point shot but Really, uh, you can tell they're paying attention to their scouting report because what yeah. they did tonight against their two leading scorers to hold them 27, 20 some points below their average. I think those two guys were three for 20 combined. That was pretty remarkable. And that was from the formula we saw against Utah Valley holding the Toulson Cousins um, low scoring as well. And so when you see the teams able to put this together and really put together what Dan is yelling at practice <laughs> and trying to get through to them. How do they bottle this up now and take it on the road? Because I think that if you can win some key games on the road in the WAC, you're going to be in good shape come March. Yeah, obviously this place full every night. That's 14 regular season home games in a row that they've won. So there's a formula here. And, and bottling it up and taking it on the road is the key is what you're saying. And I think tonight showed a good carryover because Thursday they could have felt really good about the way they played right. against Utah Valley and maybe f fell into a lull. Seattle was kind of licking their wounds off of uh, losing at Bakersfield, the game they, you know, that, that team expected to come out here and probably get at least a split, let alone try to win two games. They're off to their best start in 55 years. So this is not what they had in mind. So GCU to be that focused tonight to come out and play even sharper than Thursday uh, wasn't really impressive. Yeah, it's really impressive too how they've been able to um, keep the foot on the gas the entire game not letting up and then they've been in some close games in that non-conference schedule and they they fell victim on the scoreboard but these games at utah valley was a close one they were able to pull it out down the stretch how can that help just the confidence of this team i think so much of what dan has preached early in the months is carrying out on the court now yeah uh, you know, what you said kind of keeping the foot on the gas you know they've talked about that time and time again that was impressive to never let them back in the game all right, now we'll see what Dan Marley has to say about his team that starts off the WAC play 2-0. Uh, all right. Uh, very happy uh, with our performance. Obviously, when we hold that team to uh, 33 34% shooting, that's a, that's a heck of a defensive night, especially with that team. They're very efficient offensively. Um, can really play. Uh, so the two things we talked about, defense and rebounding. I said about rebounding 42 to 31. Again, really good. So proud of our guys. We did what we were supposed to do. By no means we did, We thought it would be easy, and it wasn't. Uh, very happy with how we played. Um, we just got to keep that edge, and we got to keep playing that way and understand that uh, that's how we're going to win. And can't be happy. We can be satisfied that we won. Uh, but home games, and now we got to go on the road to win, so we got to keep that edge. Yeah, you know, we talked about rebounding, and Trey's a very big guard. He's athletic, he's strong, he's big. Um, and I'm not surprised. I'm surprised it took him this long to do it. He's, uh, we've talked about rebounding, about, you know, if we win the rebounding war, we're going to win the game. And he took it about himself. He had 10 rebounds at half, so I don't know why he didn't get 20. But he got 14, which is nice. So we got to have our guards. It's, sometimes it's hard for our bigs when they're down wrestling guys that, for them to get rebounds. So our guards have to come back. And we talk about our guards are big. So Trey did a fantastic job of rebounding the basketball. And that's the type of effort we have to have to win. Does it show how much the guys are paying attention to the game plan for what you did against Toulson the other night and then tonight? Well, Carter, it's the same game means. plan we've done for six years. Uh, I think this team is starting to figure out that uh, they have to do it to win. And, and they understand how important whack play is, and they understand that uh, it's not working um, when they take mental lapses and we don't work hard. I told them one of our strengths is our depth. We got guys that can come in and out. We got guys that can play. So when you're on the floor, you got to play hard offensively. You got to play hard defensively. You got to rebound. And to do that, uh, you got to buy in. And I tell them all the time, just do what the coaching staff asks you, what we practice, and you'll be fine. Let it be my fault. If it doesn't work, it's my fault. And they've really bought into that. They're trying to do the exact stuff they're doing, and they're doing it great. Um, 
they're doing an unbelievable job. So I'm, I'm really happy for them. And I think they understand now that, uh, you know, for us to win, we're going to have to be really good defensively. And uh, they're buying into it. How satisfying is it to see some of those points you've hammered home carry over on the court? You're actually seeing it. And then how does that affect the players? Well, it's good play? because they're taking ownership. I've told them forever that I, I can coach all I want, but this team's not going to be good until they take ownership and they want to be good. It's their team. You know, it's their team. So our guys are starting to take ownership of that and they're holding each other accountable and they understand it and uh, they want to be good. So that's that's the best feeling a coach ever has and with them that they, uh, you know, just uh, judge themselves and they police themselves and uh, they hold each other accountable and they want to be good. And, uh, you know, when you get success, I talked about, you know, in the non-conference losing games is hard and sometimes it can fracture you. Uh, but not this team. It uh, did a good job of uh, staying positive and working harder and trying to get better. And sometimes it takes a while. And by no means do I think we're there because we have a long way to go. But I, I see us starting to turn the corner. That was some of your best offense that opened up the lead at the start of the second half. What did you like about what they were doing during that stretch? Uh, you know, just moving the ball, made some shots. Again, when we, you know, move bodies and move ball and cut and play off of Ali and make shots, I thought Michael came in and, uh, it's good to have him back, back, made a few shots, which was nice. Um, so just sharing the basketball, moving and cutting and getting some easy shots. But uh, it's better to play offense when you're, not, uh, when you're not taking the ball out of the basket. We were able to get stops, which got us out and uh, run a little bit. So, you know, when we play the defense we did, especially in the second half, it's, it's better for your offense. Uh, no, they take a lot of threes. They shoot almost as many as we do, and they shoot it at a high rate. Um, they shoot almost 40% from three. Uh, first half, they were four for five, and uh, I was mad at those five because they uh, guys were lazy on it, and they left some strong corner threes. So uh, we knew that they were going to be able to shoot threes. We had to stay home on, on them and uh, not let that be a big weapon, which is what they do. So uh, after the first half, I thought we did a better job. It's been a battle every game you go up against New Mexico State. What are you anticipating with Thursday's battle. action? You know, especially since they lost their first game at Cal Baptist, I'm sure they're not feeling very good about themselves. Uh, it's going to be a battle anytime GCU and New Mexico State play, no matter where it's at. So I expect them to be ready to play, and we'll be ready to play. And it'll be two of the better teams playing at a, at a really uh, good place to play. So it'll be exciting. It's what college basketball is about. You know, we went in there last year and played really well, didn't end up finishing the job and lost. Uh, but if you're a college basketball player, this is the fun games to play in. The start of this tough schedule could have been tougher if, if you'd been away. How much mm -hmm. does the home mean? That's 14 regular season. Home, home means tomorrow. everything to everybody. You know, as you can see so far, I haven't checked the scores now, but you know that first, first game, all the home teams win. It's going to be hard to win on the road in the WEC. And if you want to be good and you want to take care of business, you better win at home, especially in this place. Uh, again, we had an unbelievable crowd, with our, with, uh, even without our students here. Uh, very thankful for that. Can't wait for the Havocs to be back. Would we'll even turn this place up even larger. So uh, we always want to win at home because we know how important it is to people around here and how important it is to us because it's so hard to get out on the road and win. All right, thank you. Thanks, have a good trip. Take a look at our final stats. 71-57, the Lopes win their second in a row in conference play. As you look at the numbers, three-point field goal, seven of 18. That's improved from Utah Valley. Rebounding margin decisive, 42-31. Assists 18 to six. Huge. Utah Valley had three on Thursday. Fast break points, 10 to two. Well, I like that too. Uh, Tid could be better, but the two was fantastic. It means you're getting back in defense and really making them play in a half court set. And they held Carter and Means three of 20 from the field. Well, what wonderful job. I yeah. mean, you talked about a 34% field goal percentage. I mean, that's huge. Yeah. Let's take a, a revisit to your Sanderson forward three keys. Well, the first one is that, you know, we talked about, you know, making the, this game a pace in which GCU would thrive and win, and they certainly did that. They held them to 57 points on just on the 34% shooting uh, from the field. I love the Pearl Jam. Punch it inside. That's what we talked about. Jam it inside there. 32 points uh, in the paint at just 24. And then had to get something good. Did My bench didn't want to walk out of here smelling like three-day-old three day fish from the Pike Place Market. So they did a great job. Came out here 21 points to just six for Seattle. I mean, give Carlos Johnson, Finky, those guys did the bulk of the lifting off that bench. And look, they fixed your net. 
Oh, good. <laughs> I can sleep can rest tonight. Easy tonight. Well, the Lopes are going to rest easy tonight as they'll be off to Las Cruces next week, and they'll need to be well-rested, taking on the defending WAC champions, New Mexico State Aggies, with a Saturday trip to Utah, Rio Grande Valley. Be sure to listen to Michael Potter on the Fanatic, 1580 AM, 99.3 FM. Next telecast of GCU men's basketball on your view is Thursday, January 17th, when the Cougars of Chicago State Visit the House of Havoc to take on the Lopes. Tune into your view, Cox Channel 4, or watch the game online at GCU.tv, starting with the pregame show with Kate at 6.30. But that'll do it from here at GCU Arena tonight, where the Lopes are victorious over the Red Hawks, 71-57. Please join us again, as I mentioned, January 17th, GCU hosting Chicago State. But until then, for Kate Longworth, Scott Williams, and our entire crew, I'm Barry Butel, wishing you a wonderful evening.